Okay, let's get started here. Let's uh, close the attendance check-in. And as Julie said, this is not like an official vote for anything. So don't worry if you didn't get your vote in in time. It's really just a, a test vote. Okay, so while we're waiting for these screens to go by to confirm that your vote got registered. Uh, good evening, everyone. I'm calling Arlington's annual town meeting session seven to order on Monday, May 16th, 2022. Okay. So let's get started with the uh, uh, Star Spangled Banner. Thank you. So I have a few opening remarks before we get to business. Uh, first, to answer a logistical question that's been coming up, town meeting will not meet on Memorial Day, which is May 30th, two weeks from today. Uh, next, I sent a letter to the TMM email list this weekend offering some details and context for my decision to institute a straw poll for assessing interest in terminating debate. We're going to continue that practice tonight. As I mentioned in, in my letter, Going forward, the straw poll will not trigger automatically every 15 minutes of debate, but will trigger no sooner than every 15 minutes. And ultimately, the decision on whether to terminate debate or continue debate is up to town meeting members. I sent another letter this morning clarifying my policy for accepting materials for distribution to the TMM email list and posting to the annotated warrant. Please review the updated policy. Long story short, materials need to be submitted by appropriate town officials, committee chairs, or town meeting members. So if a member of the general public wishes to submit material, it must be co-signed by and submitted by a town meeting member. Next, I've consulted with town council about the requirement of cycling through screens to show votes. It's complicated, but there's no requirement about showing these screens on votes to terminate debate. So I'm going to save us some time and not show those screens when we're voting to terminate debate. Also, I've worked with the developer of the virtual town meeting platform to track certain timings during the meeting, like when a speaker starts and finishes during debate. I intend to use this information going forward to help me identify speakers in the, in the queue who have spoken less frequently or for a shorter amount of time compared to speakers ahead of them so that I can promote the speakers who've gotten less airtime. It's going to be a challenge to incorporate this information live during the meeting, but I'll do my best. And if we get a string of speakers who are all on the same side of a debate, 
I may ask for raised hands in Zoom for anyone in the speaking queue who wishes to speak on the other side. I've already done this a couple of times and will continue to do so as needed. Next, I want to remind everyone that the proper term is select board, not the board of selectmen. Town meeting voted to change the name of the board at town meeting in 2018, article 20, which passed 195 to six. I appreciate that old habits die hard, uh, but for new members who don't have the habit of using the outdated term, it sounds like an exclusionary relic of the past because it is. So please remember to use the inclusive term select board. And if I fail to correct someone who uses the old term, feel free to remind me through the Q&A in Zoom. And finally, I wanna pass along uh, the sad news that Elsie Fiore, who was a town meeting member for 56 years from 1962 to 2017, passed away Saturday night at the age of 95. I wish to offer condolences to Ms. Fiore's family including her son, Peter, who serves on town meeting today. So please join me in a moment of silence for Elsie and her significant contributions and service to Arlington. Great, thank you. Okay, so let's move on now to the swearing in. Uh, we're actually not gonna do that live in the meeting to save some time. If there is anyone still who, any new town meeting members who have not uh, taking the oath of office, been, not been sworn in yet, please contact uh, the town clerk, uh, Julie Brazil, at your earliest convenience. Uh, and I now recognize the chair of the select board, uh, Mr. Diggins. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. It is moved that if all business is meeting as set forth in the warrant for the special for, for town meeting is not disposed of at this session, when the meeting adjourns, it adjourns to Wednesday, May 18th, 2022 at 8 p.m. Okay, uh, that's for the annual town meeting, of course. And uh, any seconds? On second. That? And we have a second by Mr. Foskett uh, for the motion uh, moved by Mr. Diggins. Uh, uh, let's enable raise hands in Zooms for any in Zoom for any uh, objections to that. Okay, seeing no objections. If we don't finish tonight, we will uh, continue on Wednesday, May eighteenth, at eight p.m. Uh, and now I want to call for any announcements or resolutions. Uh, you can raise hand in Zoom. Uh, Mr. Yeah. Moderator? Yes. Uh, Charles Foskin, Precinct 10, Chair of the uh, Finance Committee. Uh, I would like to request um, an administrative change to budget number 16, the Zoning Board of Appeals budget. There's a little notation on the left side of the page about a full time equivalence for three years and then the full-time equivalent in the current year. And the it turns out that the- uh, Hold on one, one second, Mr. Foskett. Um, can we bring up that uh, on the dis display that so that everyone can see what Mr. Foskett is referring to? This is item 16 in the budgets, correct? It says is appendix B in the finance committee report. Sorry. Let's see, it's 16. So this should be on page, uh, let's see. Uh, B5, I believe. Yeah. B5, yes. There it is. Okay. Sorry. To B6. B6. Oh, B6. Yeah. Uh, go ahead, Mr. Foskin. Yes, thank you, sir. Um, so under the detail of personal services, it says principal clerk and typist, and it says 0 .49, 0 .49, 0 .49, 0 .49, and 0 .89. Mm -hmm. So the 0.89 is correct. The three prior figures should read 0.29. Okay, so it should be 0 0.29, 0 0.29, 0 0.29, 0.89. Yes. Okay, we can make that change administratively. Um, Thank I you. Trust, uh, Ms. Brazil, you, you can uh, make that change in the uh, clerk's records. Okay. Okay, uh, do we have any other uh, announcements or resolutions at this point? You can raise hands in Zoom if you do. Okay, seeing none. Uh, I now call for reports that are ready to be received. Mr. Moderator, I move that Article 3 um, be removed from the table. Okay, so Mr. Foskett's move, uh, moved to remove second. Article 3 from the table. We have a second from Ms. Brazil. Um, uh, any objections in Zoom? I see we have no objections. Uh, so Article 3. Uh, is now before us. Uh, so we are now ready to receive uh, reports. Uh, 
Uh, if anyone has any reports, uh, please raise your hands in Zoom. And I see uh, Mr. Barr uh, has his hand raised. Go ahead, please. Uh, thank you, moderator Christiana, uh, Joe Barr, um, Precinct 5, um, and also the co-chair of the Master Plan Implementation Committee. So I would like to um, provide a brief update from the Master Plan Implementation Committee based on our report to town meeting. Okay, um, thank you very much. Um, so uh, it has been, uh, as it has been for the last several years, a busy year for the Master Plan Implementation Committee. Um, and we are continuing to make progress on the, the work of that group. Um, it, it definitely demonstrates how much work has been accomplished to implement the master plan. So I'll provide some brief highlights from the committee's report um, and uh, also uh, clarify a little bit regarding some of the Warren articles. Um, since, the, since the master plan was adopted in 2015, we've been spotlighting articles which advance the master plan's goals and objectives uh, since 2017. Um, some of the highlights that I'll talk about illustrate where the committee had consensus and articles that advance the plan, which is really the role of the committee with respect to articles that are being uh, considered by town meeting. Um, the select board endorsed and the MPAC approved uh, Connect Arlington, which is the town's long range transportation plan to ensure that all Arlington residents, workers, business owners and visitors are provided with safe, reliable, and multimodal transportation uh, that meets the needs of all ages and abilities. Um, the actions described below advance key recommendations of Connect Arlington, which is also taken over uh, from the original transportation and mobility recommendations in the master plan as sort of a, a more full development of those uh, needs. Uh, Department of Planning and Community Development, or DPCD, began the Minuteman Bikeway planning study to look at opportunities uh, for safety improvements improvements to connectivity of the bikeway and ensure that multiple modes can utilize the bikeway. Uh, the ARB and the select board adopted the housing production plan, uh, which will help the town to achieve housing goals to meet a range of housing needs and current and projected housing demand. Uh, the town also continues to work with the Stratton School and Neighborhood on a MassDOT Safe Routes to School project. Uh, in addition, the town expanded the regional bike share program into Arlington in 2020 per the master plan goal, uh, and that's the blue bike system. Um, a community survey exploring options for an additional two stations to extend the network through the center and towards Arlington Heights was administered in April 2022. And as I think town meeting members know, DPCD is requesting an appropriation of $100,000 to support two years of operations, maintenance, and assistance to income eligible users of the Blue Bikes bike share system under Article 60. Um, CBD, CBD, CDBG and CPA funds, excuse me, are being requested at this town meeting that will help advance future town projects, including a study of Cooks Hollow and a feasibility study from Mount Gilboa. Um, CPA funds for the Arlington Affordable Housing Trust would help jumpstart trust initiatives in advance multiple plans. The trust action plan, the housing plan, and the fair housing action plan. Um, the MPIC's, MPIC's zoning bylaw working group was uh, busy reviewing and providing feedback on numerous zoning warrant articles for this town meeting, including Article 33, Article 34, Article 35 and Article 36. Uh, in addition, the MPIC's Cultural and Historic Resources Working Group initiated a community-wide archeological reconnaissance survey and a documentation project of 20 town-owned properties and landscapes, both project, projects funded by CPA. Uh, the town, really importantly, is also finalizing an open space and recreation plan update and is con con continuing to work on public land management plan, which will help address longstanding maintenance and conservation protection asset management of our town owned natural resources. Again, both those projects are funded by CPA. Um, lastly, over this past year, the community center project was completed and the town yard or DPW yard project began, which will help to update and renovate town owned facilities in alignment with the master plan and maintaining critical town resources. Uh, finally, I just wanted to clarify um, the, our, the uh, MPIC's action on a, a few warrant articles relating to um, the uh, uh, to zoning issues um, is as noted in the, in the minutes of one of our meetings, we voted uh, to um, endorse articles 28, 29, and 41, which are all related to which, which, which the endorsement meaning that they sort of conform to the goals of the master plan. It's not a recommendation of action or no action or anything like that. Uh, it's just sort of us saying that we believe that these are consistent with the master plan goals. Uh, importantly, regarding Warren Article 38, um, it also is reflected in the meeting minutes 
the MPIC took no position on this article. Um, the MPIC, as I said, does not make formal recommendations to the ARB, and the email sent to the ARB that indicated a vote of no action did not actively represent the endpoint of the MPIC discussion. With that, I thank you very much and turn it back to you. Great, thank you. Yeah, we are at the four minute mark. Thank you. So Great. thank you for that uh, update on the report, and that's MPIC report to town meeting. MPIC is the Master Plan Implementation Committee. Uh, do we have any, any other reports that are ready to be received? If you do, uh, please raise your hand in Zoom. Okay, seeing none. Uh, Mr. Moderator, yes, Mr. Foskett, Foskett. Article 3 be laid upon the table. Okay. Second. So we have a motion by Mr. Foskett to lay Article 3 upon the table, so we'll hold it for another time. Uh, and a second by Ms. Brazil. Any objections in Zoom to laying Article 3 on the table to be taken up later? So we can see, receive more reports in the future. Seeing none, uh, I declare the vote unanimous and uh, Article 3 is now on the table. So we now have Article 50 back before us. Article 50 is where we left off uh, last Wednesday. Uh, we finished the uh, discussion of the education bu budget. And let's see. Um, and so just to clarify, just uh, uh, where, where this is headed and how the process is going to work, uh, especially for those who are not familiar. Uh, after we finish debating the budgets that were held at last Wednesday night's meeting, we will take one vote on the entirety of Article 50, which covers all the budgets and funds listed in Appendix B of the Finance Committee report. There is no line item veto on these budgets. You cannot vote down a single budget, let alone vote down a single item in one of those budgets. Uh, second, there were some notices of reconsideration given for holding a budget for debate and termination of debate on the education budget. Uh, according to uh, the handbook, town meeting time, uh, moving the previous question, which we typically refer to more colloquially as moving to terminate debate, cannot be reconsidered uh, according to the rules. Uh, furthermore, the member who requested that notice of reconsideration uh, did not vote on the prevailing side of that motion uh, so the request is denied. Uh, as for the request to hold a budget, since we're already at the stage of discussing budgets, uh, having completed discussion of the education budget, I will not entertain retroactive holds, uh, nor do I believe uh, that uh, notices of reconsideration apply to such holds uh, or lack of holds. Uh, lastly, if you have any questions about a budget, please be mindful about whether it's a question that would be more appropriate to ask offline to the town manager or department head rather than taking up town meetings time, uh, especially if it's something that you're personally curious about, but might not be particularly uh, relevant uh, to uh, other residents or town meeting members. Uh, so let's try to be respectful of everyone's time. Uh, okay, so let's now, so the next budget that, that we had held for debate was uh, uh, budget number one, the finance committee budget. Uh, and that was held by Mr. Revelak. Uh, so can we bring up, so do we have, uh, can we, um, I, guess, I guess I guess we don't need to bring up the specific termination of debate on that until uh, we get to that point um, or we run out of speakers. Uh, so uh, I'll give Mr. Revelak the first shot at this. And I'll do this for each of the budgets. Uh, whoever was the first person in line uh, to hold the budget, I'll, you know, I'll be happy to, to call you up. So. Uh, so let's open up the queue for debate uh, or discussion on the Finance Committee budget. And uh, we can start with Mr. Revelak, uh, who held it um, from the list of budgets. Uh, thank you, Mr. Moderator, Steve Revelak, Precinct 1. Um, I just have, my questions have to do with the budget in general, and I thought the Finance Committee budget would be the best context for asking them. I hope that's appropriate, and I will be try to, I will try to be mindful and respectful of the, the meeting's time. Um, so when it comes to Arlington's budget, we typically ask questions about, uh, we talk about spending, and, and for, good, for good reason. Um, I'd like to ask a question or two about the other side of the balance sheet, uh, income, and more specifically, new growth. Uh, Mr. Moderator, is there someone here who could provide a brief explanation or definition of what new growth is? Uh, let's see. Let, let's start with uh, Mr. Foskett, since this is the Finance Committee uh, budget. Uh, if not, we can, we can go to Mr. Chapdelaine, perhaps. Uh, thank you, thank you, Mr. Moderator Charles Foskett, Precinct Ten. Uh, new new growth is uh, expansion of the asset base of the town based on uh, new building or um, renovations or improvements in, in buildings that are contained in mostly in the uh, real estate tax base. 
All right, thank you, Mr. Foskett. Um, and Mr. Moderator, I'm wondering, um, how does new growth affect the, our budget deficit and the need for overrides? Mr. Foskett, can you field that question? <clears throat> well, if you look um, at the um, five-year uh, plan, the back of the um, um, Appendix D, the back of the Finance Committee report, uh, you see a line item called uh, property tax E, and that's a revenue item. And when that increases uh, from year to year, it, it will increase uh, basically for uh, two or three reasons. One is that there's a, a typical uh, permitted 2.5% increase in the tax base on existing assets, and there may also be new growth. In other words, assets that are taxed that weren't existing in the prior fiscal year. Okay, and could I, would it be fair to say that um, if Arlington, you know, new growth would either reduce the amount of deficit in any given year, or perhaps um, reduce the frequency of overrides? Yes. Okay, so I, the reason I bring this up is um, I was reading through our public an annual financial report, which says that we had 0.72% new growth this year, um, and the you know which happens to be lower than any of our, any of our comparable communities. So we we came in last, and it's also well below the state average of 1.6%. So it's um. I guess compared to our peers, we're we're growing quite slowly. So, Mr. Moderator, I'm wondering why our level of new growth is so low, and if there are bylaws or policies or zoning that generally inhibit new growth in Arlington. Uh, Mr. Foskett, do you want to take a? Uh, it's it's quite simple. We don't have any more land. It's it's we're we're land constrained, and uh, the towns that have high uh, rates of new growth have, relatively speaking, vast. Experience land where um, you know new lab space can be put in or new uh, manufacturing facilities uh, think Fort Devens out, out uh, in in the uh, 495 um, you know when they closed the military base there they left hundreds and hundreds of acres to be expanded into uh, new development and that creates new tax income that's new growth I was actually thinking more along the lines of, say, Watertown or Waltham or you know, Medford, other communities that are also land constrained, but still seem to be finding ways to to expand and build their tax base. So uh, to just, I, I do want to keep this uh, in scope, and we're, we're kind of no, 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 no. So I'll, I'll just, um, so I would just want to just point out that you know, in terms of you know the need for overrides and you know the need to control spending there is another half to the budget equation and that you know while arlington may never hope to attract the amount of commercial investment that uh you know like say a cambridge or a somerville or a watertown or waltham might get um a little bit some new growth might help take some of the edge off the overrides thank you mr moderator and that, that's that's starting pretty far to scope but uh, uh since you're done um let's take uh mr moore next Christopher Moore, Precinct 14, pass. Okay, let's take Mr. Levy next. And name and precinct, please. Let's see, is Mr. Levy able to unmute? Um, let's see, I'm seeing that he's not here, it appears. Okay, um, let's, um, uh, in the interest of kind of spreading the wealth of speaking time, let's go to Ms. Hyam. Liba Hyam, Precinct 15, pass. Okay. Uh, and let's take uh, Mr. Miller. And then if there's time, we'll go back to Mr. Trumbull.
Is Mr. Miller there? Uh, apologize, um, multiple mutes. Matthew yeah. Miller, Precinct 11. Um, so my thought on this issue was uh, kind of aligned with what we previously heard. Um, I think it is appropriate to consider that um, you know the overrides are um, a little bit more than other towns, and also that I think that um, you know if there are other towns that are um, land restricted like ours is, uh, what's the difference? Um, I'll leave it at that for open discussion. If anybody has any comments on that, thank you. Great, thank you. Okay, let's take uh, Mr. Tremblay. Hello, Mr. Moderator. I'm not quite sure how my name got on the waiting to speak list. Maybe it's left over from the school budget. I hope we'll have uh, opportunities to speak on other budgets later on, but I, I have nothing to say about uh, the Finance Committee. Okay, thank you. Uh, let's take uh, Mr. McCabe next. Precinct two, I stand to terminate debate on Article Fifty and all matters before it. Uh, Mr. McCabe, uh, for all the budgets or for the Finance Committee budget? Uh, the Finance Committee. Okay, so we have a motion to terminate debate on the Finance Committee budget uh, by Mr. McCabe. Um, uh, do we have a second? Okay, I assume these seconds are uh, in reference to that. Our second from uh, Mr. Palmer. Uh, so let's bring up a vote to terminate debate on the Finance Committee budget. Okay, so we should still have the enforced waves of voting um, uh, in effect. So uh, if you see a message that your turn to vote has not come up yet, just uh, please sit tight um, and you'll, you'll get a chance. I'll be keeping an eye on how many votes have been cast and how many outstanding votes there are. So um, to make sure that we're getting uh, almost everybody able to vote, if not everyone. And so we're voting here on whether vote yes, if you wish to terminate debate on the finance committee budget, uh, vote no, if you wanna continue debate on the finance committee budget. Okay. And uh, just, uh, for folks waiting to vote, or if you've already voted, um, uh, I just want to point out, like there may be more kind of jumping around uh, out of order of the speaking queue uh, tonight of folks that I select to speak. Uh, and that is because I'm consulting kind of like some of the historical data we have from previous meetings of uh, you know, speaking times, durations, frequencies, um, and trying to kind of spread that wealth of speaking time. Um, so. Okay, so we have about 220 voters with about a couple of dozen still outstanding. Um, only six voters who haven't voted, uh, who have been, uh, or six members who haven't voted who are, uh, have been recently active in the portal. So try to get your votes in if you can. Uh, let's just give folks another uh, uh, 15 seconds. And 10 seconds, and you can always get your vote through the Q&A if you're having trouble with the portal. Five seconds. 
And let's close voting on termination of debate of the Finance Committee budget in Article 50. And just a reminder that we will not be cycling through the voting screens for votes to terminate debate. Uh, so the motion passes, 201 in the affirmative, 24 negative. Uh, so debate is terminated on the Finance Committee budget. Um, so let's now move on to budget number three, the town manager budget. And the first person I had who had raised hands was uh, Mr. Marr. So can we bring, can we bring up Mr. Marr? Uh oh, it's been a while since I've seen that screen. Okay, did we, did we clear the speaking queue? Thank you, Mr. Moderator. John Marr, Precinct, okay. Precinct 14. Uh, by the way, I'm pleased to be participating in my 48th annual town meeting. Oh, congratulations. Thanks. Um, as we know, uh, Mr. Champdelaine is, is leaving the town, and I think uh, the town is much better off for his tenure and much poorer for his leaving. But my concern is not so much to talk about Adam, but it is to talk about the salary line item, which has troubled me for some time. Uh, it is extremely difficult to find professional town managers. Uh, and as we know, town manager position is extremely important to having a strong manager town form of government in Arlington. Uh, there are at least three other communities surrounding us that are seeking professional management positions. I, I'm not sure. I think that's Cambridge, Lexington, and perhaps one other. Uh, but the as the town manager's position is, uh, the hiring is not subject to the pay and classification plan. It's subject to a particular provision of the general laws, which permits the select board to negotiate a contract on various salary and fringe uh, benefit items. And I've been uh, concerned about the, the low figure that the town manager's position has received over the years. And I just would like to uh, get the, the uh, perhaps the select board could weigh in and give us an update on where we are with regard to the research on, uh, for a new town manager. I know we uh, have a consulting firm, uh, but again, my concern is that in the future that the select board not be reticent with regard to providing uh, adequate compensation because I think that's absolutely critical to getting a new town manager, be he or she, uh, to fill this extremely important position. So if I could, through you, Mr. Moderator, ask the select board where we are with regard to that new uh, uh, selection of a town manager. Sure, sure. Uh, Mr. Diggins, uh, do you want to take a step at that? Sure. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. I'm me, Mr. Moderator, and thanks for the question, Mr. Maher. Uh, so at tonight's meeting, we have, uh, we, I was authorized me by my colleagues me to enter into negotiations with Mr. Pooler and to potentially function as the um, acting uh, appointed town manager uh, that could potentially last me the, the, the remainder of Mr. Chapdelaine's term, me most likely not, uh, uh, but we are in the process, we have hired uh, a search firm and, and we are in the process of starting to engage them. I am meeting with um, the um, director of HR uh, tomorrow to, in order to discuss the details of starting, taking the next steps in that process. And so that's where we are. And um, I am I'm willing to entertain a follow-up, but that would be through the moderator. Yeah. Anything else, uh, Mr. Mark? No, thank you, uh, Mr. Moderator. I appreciate it. Great, thank you. Uh, and apologies, there was some confusion about the, the speaking here. I think we had leakage of speakers from uh, from Wednesday night's meeting because it's all under the same article. The budgets work a little differently from most articles, so I apologize for that. We'll try to get that right going forward by clearing the speaker queue in between each of the budget discussions. Uh, let's take uh, Mr. Kepline next. Thank you, Mr. Moderator, Mark Kepline, Precinct 9. Uh, while Mr. Chaplain still might be available to town meeting, is can I ask him a question? Uh, you can ask a question, which I uh, which I, I, I may forward to him, yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, so for a long time, I've been concerned about um, headcount growth in the town budget and a shortage of capital spending. 
you know, even just simple things like street lighting um, or street sweeping or maintaining, you know, street paint. Yeah, so um, we'll, we'll get to the capital budget in Article 51, but if you can keep it focused to the town manager. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'd like to know that why, um, while other towns did a lot of layoffs in early 2020, uh, Arlington did none. Um, other towns, people laid off, especially lower level ones, uh, sure. so, were so, able to. Yes, yeah, so, so let me just interrupt there. So as, as far as like, so we're getting out, that's outside of scope now because we're talking about the budget uh, uh, for this year, not, not going back to 2020 from two years. Okay, ago. well, um, why have we added 12 new positions using ARPA funds and what's gonna pay for them when the ARPA funds exhaust are exhausted? Other towns used ARPA funds to rehire laid off workers, but Arlington didn't do that. So um, they saved money, but Arlington taxpayers kept paying and paying. So um, what's gonna happen with these ARPA um, funded uh, positions? Sure, so Mr. Chaplain, do you have an answer for Mr. Kaplan's question about the use of ARPA funds for, uh, for new positions? Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Adam Chapdelaine, town manager. Uh, I'm not immediately familiar with 12 positions being funded by ARPA as suggested by the speaker. Uh, there are a small number, I believe, um, two positions, at least for town departments, being funded through ARPA dollars. And we've made it clear uh, for both those town departments that are receiving staff funding for, or from ARPA as well as some nonprofits in the community that have received ARPA funding, who will be utilizing it for staffing, that it cannot be expected to be continued after the expiration of the eligibility for the use of ARPA funds, which is December 31st, 2024. So we've made it very clear that we understand there are needs to be met stemming from our continued recovery from the pandemic. However, we cannot expect to be able to continue those positions after the expiration uh, or the full usage of ARPA funding. Okay. And anything else, Mr. Kaplan? No, I guess that's the only answer I'm getting. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, we'll take Mr. Foskett next. Thank you, Mr. Moderator, Charles Foskett, Precinct 10 and Chair of the Finance Committee. Um, I, I wanna join in uh, the auditory comments about um, Mr. Chapdelaine's service. I think they're well deserved. I'd also like to comment on the prior speaker's uh, exhortation of the select board to um, focus on uh, the size of the salary of the town manager. And I, I hope that the select board keeps in mind that town salaries are growing at a rapid rate, that we are looking at um, a $7 million deficit in two years, and that one of the primary things that we should be looking for in the next town manager is his or her ability to control town expenses. Thank you. Great, thank you. Okay, I see we have no more speakers. Uh, so um, let's move on to the next budget. Uh, budget number 11, town clerk. And also just in case I didn't mention this earlier, I will set a, uh, I'll, I'll keep a timer going, uh, which I'll, I'll reset. Uh, as we start a new budget. Uh, so I'll set like a 15 minute timer. And again, it's like, it won't necessarily cut off debate at 15 minutes, but I think I'll consider that the earliest time at which, well, I, well, I, I don't have the right to, term, to, to cut off debate, but I mean is uh, to ask for a straw poll it, to see if there's interest. So uh, I'll have that timer running for each of these uh, in case we're talking about any given budget for, for longer than 15 minutes. Um, and of course, as always, it's up to the meeting whether we're actually gonna terminate debate or not. Uh, so, so do we have any speakers for so the we had uh, Ms. Benedict uh, had asked uh, to hold this from the uh, list of debate of, uh, of budgets. Uh, so if Ms. Benedict wants to get on, on the speaker queue, I'd be happy to take her up first as a courtesy for holding it. Um, I pass. Uh, pass. Benedict 2621, I pass. Okay, uh, so let's take uh, uh, Ms. Atlas. Hi, yeah, I was just looking at, sorry, Aaliyah Atlas, Precinct 4. Um, when I was looking at the budget on 11, and this might be a typo from the select 
from the Re Finance Committee report, but the number for total personnel services, uh, it detailed in 11A sums to 256, 199, and what's actually listed at the top for personnel services is 438194. Um, it, it looks like an 81% increase. And I, I do see the expenses have gone up a lot as well. So I'm just looking for some clarity if that's a typo or if there have been some changes. So let's see who's, uh, uh, Mr. Chapterlane, do you have an answer for Ms. Atlas? Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Adam Chapterlane, town manager. So this is the first year that Section B, the elections and town meeting have been included. And I believe that explains the jump. It's not actually an increase in expenditures. It's a, uh, a difference in where it was reported. The prior three years, 2021 20, and 22, elections and town meeting were budgeted under the select board's budget. Uh, and that explains the difference that you're seeing there. Thank you very much. Okay, so it, sounds, it was a reporting discontinuity across years. Thank you. Okay, seeing no more speakers uh, for town clerk budget, let's move on to budget number 14, uh, planning and community development. And Mr. Oster uh, had asked to hold that for discussion. So if, uh, if Mr. Oster wants to come up. Uh, thank you, Mr. Moderator. Adam Oster, Precinct 3. Uh, Mr. Moderator, I am trying to uh, t uh, act on your invitation to uh, preserve town meeting time by getting things in writing. And I had a, I asked this question of uh, our town manager, got a detailed response uh, and would like to refer people to it. But unfortunately, from some glitch, it's not up on the warrant yet. So I'd like to pass and uh, when it is available, uh, make a brief announcement at the start of one of the town meeting sessions. Okay, um, uh, I support your right to do so. Um, so we'll make sure we get that, that ironed out um, uh, and get that uh, posted on the, uh, the annotated warrant. Thank you. Okay, and uh, we have uh, Ms. Bloom, let's take her up next. Nancy Bloom, Precinct 18. I have a small question on the planning and community development uh, budget. Uh, the expenses went up by 81,000. Is that an extra person? Could someone answer that? Uh, is, uh, is Ms. Rate here? Director Rate? Uh, or Mr. Chapterlane, are you able to answer that question? Yes, I, I can, Mr. Moderator. Adam Chapterlane, Town Manager. The major difference, the major addition that you're seeing in this budget is the CDBG administrator. That's a position that has existed in town for decades since the start of the town receiving CDBG funding from the federal government. However, we've never reported it as part of the general fund. We've always kept it in a separate grant account. However, this year, in an attempt to increase um, or really ever increase our transparency in our budgetary documents, we reported the CDBD, uh, CDB, CDBG, excuse me, administrator position in the general fund budget, but we're showing an offset and in, in you can see up under the offset section, a CDB administrator offset. So there's no new expenditure to the general fund coming from that, but we are reporting it and thereby showing uh, an increase in expenditures based upon that. Thank you, Mr. Moderator, Mr. Chapelain. Great, thank you. Uh, seeing no more speakers, let's move on. But I find that community development block grant rolls off the tongue better, even though it's a lot more syllables. So let's move on to uh, budget number 16, Zoning Board of Appeals. And um, Ms. Friedman uh, asked to hold that budget for discussion. So if Ms. Friedman wants to come up uh, to speak. Um, name and precinct, please. Bethann Friedman, Precinct 15, pass. Okay. Uh, seeing no more speakers, let's move on to budget 17, public works. And so let's bring up Mr. Tremblay um, and let's queue up Mr. Rodemarker. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Tremblay, Precinct 19. Um, 
One of the uh, one of the questions I have is, um, I was curious if the town is planning to. Um, part of me wants to say mess up more intersections in town, but I, I think I'll, I'll I'll be polite and say, um, is the town planning to reconfigure any more intersections in town this year? Yeah, let's go with the more uh, polite framing. Uh, Mr. Rademacher, do, do you have an answer to that? Whether there's any plans to uh, reconfigure any intersections in town? Uh, thank you, Mr. Moderator. Michael Rademacher, Director of Public Works. The two major uh, intersection projects that are in planning right now are Mass Ave and Appleton and Chestnut Street and um, Chestnut Street, where the, uh, we're looking at some improvements to um, crosswalks. I guess I'm not familiar with, where, with Chestnut Street. Appleton Street, are you going to be uh, uh, taking down those the uh, the markers and putting up curbs or anything like that? Or uh, what, what do we? Get? I mean, I've seen problems with that intersection when they uh, when a truck tries to uh, deliver. Uh, materials to the uh, stores along there the uh, bus can't get through that's that was quite amusing watching that um mr rodemacher thank you mr moderator michael rodemacher director of public works uh, it, the project is in the is in the planning and design stage so i, I don't have a clear picture of what the ultimate design will be well will there be uh public hearings about that yes yeah. All right. Um, I guess that's all I have for now. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Trevor. Let's take Mr. Kepline next. Hi, Mark Kepline, Precinct 9. I had a little head scratcher about the Mount Gilboa repaving um, as a private way. Uh, so the house is owned by the town and the park that the road runs through is owned by the town. And yet this came out of a private way repaving budget. I, I'm curious how the accounting worked out, that's all. Uh, Mr. Rock, do you have the answer to uh, where, where the funds for that project came from? There was a private way, uh, I'm sorry, Mike Rademacher, Director of Public Works. Uh, there was a private way not leading up to the road, but a private way in the area. Uh, that was Does that answer your question, Mr. Kepler? Um, I don't know. I'm a little confused what what road was repaved. I I, I remember from for long standing that the road going to the house uh, was in uh, need of improvement, but uh, I'm not sure what road. You know, I'm just looking at the map. It looked like, you know, it's all surrounded by the town of Butters. So they're you know, it's the town. Whatever. Okay. Thank okay. you. If nothing else, uh, we have no more speakers uh, for the public works budget. So let's move on to budget number 18, the facilities budget. And we had uh, Ms. Thornton um, ask to hold that. So if you can bring up Ms. Thornton. Good evening, Mr. Moderator. Thank you. Uh, my name is Barbara Thornton, Precinct 16. I have a question about the facilities department budget. The uh, Arlington invests a lot of money in our buildings. We spent $2 million for the high school alone, but the assessed 200 million, but the assessed value records as of a couple of years ago only showed uh, buildings at uh, five to 10% of their replacement value. For example, Robbins Library was valued at about 3.8 million. Replacing our hard assets is expensive and the facilities department is the key department charged to take care of properties and make them last. This benefits the taxpayers. Facilities maintenance is a relatively new department but seems to have had a lot of turnover in its leadership. Last year, the select board received a commitment from the town manager to produce a report on the department's progress on a regular basis at a minimum of once a year. Can someone speak to the status of the department, its director, and whether there is an annual report available for last fiscal year or this fiscal year? Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Chapdelaine, do, do you have an answer for Ms. Thornton? Yes, thank you, Adam Chapdelaine, town manager. 
Uh, Ms. Thornton's absolutely correct. We have suffered from turnover in the director's position over the course of the past several years. We are fortunate, however, that a new facilities director uh, with a great deal of experience in managing institutional buildings like those that Arlington has operating as a town government started today. Uh, so we do have a new facilities Terrific. director. Uh, yeah, it's good news. It's very good news. <laughs> Mr. Rob Berendt, uh, we'll take it. Well, you know, we'll find the right opportunity to introduce him to the community in the coming weeks. Um, admittedly, given uh, given the lapse in time between the last director leaving and the hiring of a new director, we have not put together that annual report yet. Uh, but with the experience of Jim Feeney, the deputy town manager acting um, as facilities director, and now with the new director coming aboard, uh, coming aboard, we will be able to produce something and share it publicly. Great. Thank you. All right. Uh, let's take Mr. Tremblay next. Thank you, Mr. Water at Trumbly Precinct 19. Um, in keeping with your, your comments about reaching out to town uh, officials, uh, actually, uh, Mr. Feeney reached out to me when he saw me uh, uh, asking about the uh, facilities budget. And uh, we had an email exchange, very good one, and, and he answered all my questions. But uh, just briefly to report to town meetings, uh, the, the maintenance staff is very short. It's not that the town hasn't been trying to hire maintenance staff, but in this current uh, working environment, it's been very difficult. Uh, and that was the crux of my question is, is with uh, 1.3 million square feet that the town manages, uh, how, many, how many actual employees were there that actually do the work, you know, plumbers, electricians, and that, and that uh, sort. And uh, Jim told me that they're doing the best the town is doing the best they can, but they're very short staffed, just like a lot of other people. And so I will encourage the town to hire. Oh, I should. Oh, this this goes back to a previous comment about the uh, the, um, the whole step uh, step thing we talked about a couple of a couple of sessions ago. It would be very nice to have a instead of just talking about what the step is, a, a sort of a description of what it is and what the pay is, so we can get a better feel. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Feeney told me that using that step process, they've been trying to get get the uh, pay rate up to uh, something that's competitive. And uh, I, I wholeheartedly agree with that and uh, hope the town is able to hire the, uh, the, the, the skilled people that are needed to maintain all these buildings. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Thank you, Mr. Tremblay. All right, seeing no more speakers for the facilities budget, let's move on now to uh, budget number 19, police services. And uh, Mr. Weinstein was uh, 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 re requested that we hold that for discussion. So if we can get Mr. Weinstein. Yes, uh, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Name and precinct, please. Okay, thank you, Mr. Moderator. Um, I have three questions. Name, I'm sorry, uh, name and precinct first? I'm sorry, Jordan, Jordan Weinstein, precinct uh, 21. Einstein, sorry. I have, I have three questions. Uh, should I ask them all at once or one at a time? That's my first question. Uh, your call. I want you to do one at a time because. It, it, okay. It's, it's the bad. first one is about social workers. I noticed that uh, there's been a 22% drop in the salary for uh, 2023 from 60000 to about $47,000. Uh, and it looks to me the way I. I understand it or interpret it is that the position has gone from a full-time position to a three-quarters time position uh and i'm wondering if that's the case why that was or just to have that explained yes uh, uh, do we have uh, chief flaherty here to to answer uh, mr weinstein's question hey. uh, oh, go ahead Moderator Julie Flaherty, Chief of Police, um, the position of a homeless outreach um, social worker, and that's a shared position with health and, health and Human Services. So we did not reduce that position. It's shared bet um, between the two budgets. Oh, I, I guess just as a follow-up to that, but why does the budget show a decrease uh, from in 2022, 60,500, and then 2023, 47,000? Uh, Chief Flaherty? 
I will defer to um, Mr. Pooler on that. I'm, I'm, I don't have the answer to that question. All right. Uh, Deputy Town Manager, uh, uh, Mr. Pooler, do you have an answer? Mr. Weinstein, could you repeat, the Sandy Pooler Deputy Town Manager, Mr. Weinstein, could you repeat your question as I'm looking at the budget to see which line you're looking at? Yeah, sure. Uh, I'm on page 42. It's police services. Um, detail of personnel services, social workers down a third from the bottom there. Do you see that? Yes, now I see it. Thank you. Okay. So if you follow along, uh, 66,000, 69,000, 60,000 for 2022, and then it suddenly drops uh, to 47,000. And that was my question. Why, why the drop? I believe because of the accurate depiction, the accurate description of the split is really a 50-50 split between um, the police department and uh, the Health and Human Services Department. And so mm -hmm. um, in the previous budget, it overestimated what the amount was. And so this was just correcting that, those figures. Okay, all right. I, I was just wondering if the, uh, the, the uh, work week of the social worker had been reduced, but obviously it hadn't. Um, my second question has to do with the overtime figure. Um, we're paying, it seems like, generally speaking, uh, are approximately the same amount every year for police overtime to the tune of about $660,000. Uh, the first part of my question for that is, why are we spending so much money on overtime when we could potentially roll that into, I'm assuming overtime is often paid a time and a half or double time, depending on the contract, but when we could perhaps be saving money by actually hiring another body or two. Um, yeah, that's my question uh, yeah, pertaining uh, to overtime. Mr. Pooler, and uh, if, if Mr. Pooler is not able to answer, we can go to Chief Flaherty. Um, I would say that we, um, the question about hiring more people versus um, keep versus paying more overtime is one that um, is always one that we try to balance. It's so it's a good question that you're asking. Um, I think we have, in general, looked to the number of positions that the police department has told us we need. We sometimes have had vacancies in those positions, which meant means that we have not been able to fill them as quickly as we'd like to. Um, and so that sometimes means that we have more overtime than um, I ideally would like to have. Um, I would say in this day and age, I would just add, there are challenges in hiring that have been persistent um, for a number of reasons. Um, I won't go into all of them tonight. It's just a long discussion. Um, but I think overall, we do try to hire with the right number of people. And we do look at that on an ongoing basis to make sure that um, you know, we are properly staffing the department. <laughs> Okay. And okay. My side, did you have a, a third question? Um, well, I have a, one, one other follow up on that. Uh, I, I guess my concern is that I could understand if overtime spiked uh, because of a, a shortage in personnel, but it seems very consistent going uh, in 2020 around 630,000, the same amount, 2021, 2022, it goes up a little bit to 660,000. So I, I'm just uh, uh, asking if, if perhaps uh, the, the uh, town management could look into that and, and maybe see if we're spending more than we need to on overtime and could save money by actually hiring someone. Um, my third question, uh, I, I don't see it as a line item, but I'm wondering, I, I know that there's been coverage about the use of body cameras that is going to be are going to be deployed uh, in Arlington, I don't know to what extent or where that is, where that uh, uh, sits at this moment. But I was wondering where uh, where that is seen in the budget, and if it could be explained about how much uh, that's going to cost the town, if sure. anything. Sure, uh, Chief Flaherty, does that appear in the uh, the budget that we're looking at this year? No, it uh, 
Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Julie Flaherty, Chief of Police. It doesn't appear in the budget right now. The town is currently in negotiations with both police unions. Um, we did um, um, apply for and receive grant funds from the state for body one cameras. And um, we also have um, asset forfeiture funds that we, we would be purchasing them with. Okay, thank you very much, uh, uh, Mr. Moderator. I'm done, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Weinstein. Uh, let's see, next we have uh, Ms. Garber. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Name and precinct, please. Judith Garber, precinct four. Um, I actually did see something in the budget about the body cameras um, under the double star and expenses. It looks like there was 40,000 spent in fiscal year 2022 for body cameras. I remember this coming up at town meeting last year. And my question is, do we have any policies in place yet for these body cameras around recording or storage of footage, given that we're spending money on it? Uh, Chief Flaherty, can you answer that question? Yes, thank you, Mr. Moderator. Julie Flaherty, Chief of Police. We haven't spent any money on body cameras because we have not purchased them yet. We do have draft policies in place. And again, the town is currently in negotiations with police unions um, to move forward with, with body cameras. Thank you. Thank you. Apologize if I misread that budget. Um, and then the line item for stipends, about $23,000. Um, what is what are those stipends for? Uh, uh, Chief Flaherty, the stipends. Can can you answer what those are in reference to? Um, you um, be more clear. Which which stipend? Um, it just says stipends. Uh, this is the. Uh, I believe it's the second to last row before the last like total line. Uh, uh, Mr. Uh, down a little bit. Mr. Moderator. Yes. This is Sandy Pooler, Deputy Town Manager. That is a stipend uh, for clothing. Okay. And can, can we scroll the display down just a little bit to see the bottom of uh, this budget section? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. That's all. Great. Thank you. Um, Okay, so let's uh, take Mr. Jameson next. Uh, thank you, Mr. Moderator Gordon. Uh, Mr. Um, yeah, Mr. Jameson, yeah, you're. I want to ask a couple questions for you about yeah uh, mr jameson if you, if you uh, mr jameson if you can hear me uh your audio is coming in very garbled um so perhaps yeah um can, say, can someone from the panel perhaps uh contact jameson maybe his question uh, over Q and A, and try to get that addressed yeah. while we're on the police budget, because um, I, I don't think we're going to be able to have a a real time conversation over audio. Uh, um, yes. Um, so, 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 Mr. Moder Mr. Moderator, I keep getting you hear me now. Yes, I can hear you now. It seems clearer now. Mr. Moderator, the problem is I keep getting muted by the host numerous times. Oh. Um, yeah, which is quite novel. It happened last week, too. Thank you very uh, much, Mr. Meyer. Gordon Jamison, Precinct uh, 12. Um, okay, go, go I, ahead, you, I, I, I hope to inquire about police details from the chief. These, these form an important function to make sure that work in town by contractors and et cetera can get done. Otherwise, projects are delayed, and that's bad for development. Mm -hmm. Now, last year or the year before, we enlarged the scope of who can fill the details. My question uh, through to the chief is, did that fix the problem where we didn't have enough people to staff the details? Uh, chief Flaherty, did, did, um, did that address the issue with uh, having enough uh, folks for details? Thank you, Mr. Moderator, Julie Flaherty, Chief of Police. Um, it did for the most part, um, for any given day, we have from three to 30 traffic details. 
depending on um, several factors, including weather, the time of the year and the projects that are to be completed. Um, we use Arlington police officers, we use neighboring town um, police officers, and we now have four special police officers um, who have been assisting with traffic details. Um, it's really difficult to say how many details go unfilled, but the number is relatively low. So for the most part, yes, I think that that, um, that has definitely um, worked towards filling the details that were going unfilled previously. Thank you, Chief Flaherty. Now, um, I hope that you'll, you and the town manager's office will continue to monitor this. And if there's still a, um, even a small amount of unsubscribed um, next fall that you consider bringing forward to us a to town meeting, a citizen's uh, traffic solution. Um, and lastly, I have a question, perhaps Mr. Cooler might be asked of this. The fees that, that the police get for scheduling the surcharge on that, where do those funds go? And has the manager's office considered using an offset? Okay, uh, Mr. Chapdelaine, do you have an answer? Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Adam Chapdelaine, town manager. I believe, we budget those as a, in a small revenue account, but uh, I have to be honest, I would have to look into that and determine whether or not legally we could utilize that as an offset. Thank you very much. Um, and Adam, congratulations on your uh, quote unquote retirement. <laughs> we will miss you. Um, thank you very much, Mr. Moderator. Great, thank you. And I'm hearing from um, uh, technical folks on the panel that there might be issues where if someone has a uh, uh, a poor connection, uh, 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 internet connection to the Zoom call, the uh, Zoom might be, uh, uh, the permission to talk might be cycling uh, as the connection kind of comes and goes. So apologies if, that, if that's the case, we're not really sure why that, that, that was cutting out. Um, let's take, uh, uh, let's see, uh, Mr. Fisher next, or take someone out of order that we haven't heard quite uh, as much from. Hello, Ezra Fisher, Precinct 4. Um, I share my colleague's concern about the overtime line, um, the consistency of it and the size. Um, and I was just wondering what duties are most common when paying out overtime? Uh, who approves the request for overtime and what are the criteria? Sure, uh, so um, Chief Flaherty, can you answer Mr. Fisher's questions about uh, overtime, how it's decided, who, like what details tend to get it and so on? Yes, sir. Julie Flaherty, Chief of Police. We have a um, minimum amount of staffing that's um, in patrol for any given shift. And when that falls below the staffing level, then we would hire overtime and that would be in the patrol division. Okay. Anything else, Mr. Fisher? Thank you. Okay. Um, I see Mr. Foskett has his hand raised. Is that just a, uh, a leftover hand or did you have uh, that? No, uh, thank you, Mr. Moderator. Charles Foskett, Precinct 10. I, I just wanted to address Mr. Weinstein's overtime question. The, the numbers in the Finance Committee report are the budgets for overtime. That's why they're all they're very similar. And the, the overtime is sometimes used when there's a surprise when officers retire, for example, and you have to make up uh, for, the, for the lack of personnel to fill uh, certain, uh, certain duties and, um, or, or when people are out sick or, or whatever. So it's, it's a budgeted number. In, um, the, the next year's budget is based on what the actuals, how close the actuals were the prior year. Okay. Well, thank, thank you for that clarification. Sorry, I didn't catch your uh, uh, your your hand earlier. Um, no problem. Yep. Uh, okay, so let's take um, uh, Ms. Hyam next. Leba Hyam, Precinct 15. I move to terminate debate on the police budget. Okay, so we have a motion by Ms. Hyam to terminate debate on the police budget. Do we have any seconds? And we have a second from Mr. McCabe. So. Uh, let's bring up a uh, 
Let's open voting on terminating debate on the police services budget within Article 50. Okay, so we're voting on whether to terminate debate on the police budget within Article 50. Um, so if, if you want to stop debating the police budget, uh, then you'll vote yes. If you want to continue debating or discussing uh, the police budget, you would vote no. And as always, uh, termination of debate is a two thirds vote. And if, you have, if you're having trouble voting in the portal, uh, you can always vote through the Q&A. Okay, we have 195 votes in, just wait a little bit longer, try to get your votes in as quickly as you can as soon as your wave of uh, precincts opens up for voting. And then, as I mentioned earlier tonight, we will not be cycling through the voting screens uh, on votes to terminate debate, but we will on main motions and uh, motions to amend and substitute motions. Okay. Most votes are in at this point, uh, like the vast majority. So let's just wait another, another 15 seconds before we close voting on terminating debate on the police budget within Article 50, 10 seconds. Five seconds. Okay, let's close voting. And we have 170 votes in the affirmative, 53 in the negative, 76%, and it meets the two thirds uh, threshold. So debate is terminated on the police budget. And we're not gonna wait for the screens this time. Let's move on to, now you could always find these votes in the portal under the view votes button on the left-hand side if you're interested who voted to terminate debate or not. Um, so let's move on to budget number 21, uh, inspections, inspections budget. And Mr. Jameson asked to hold that. So uh, let's bring up Mr. Jameson to speak on this. Let's uh, clear the speaking queue if you haven't done that already. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Can you hear me? Yes, I can, Mr. Jameson. Go ahead. Name and precinct. Uh, Gordon Jameson, Precinct 12. Um, I wish to welcome the new Director of Inspectional Services to, uh, to the town or to the position of director. Um, perhaps the director, through you, could in, so summarize in a sentence or two the important functions of his department. Um, can we bring up the, the new director to... Um... Uh, describe his department. And also, uh, can we clear the uh, speaking? Because we still have, I believe, speakers from last budget, I believe. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Mike Champa, Director of Inspectional Services. Um, Yes, of course. Um, so obviously our, our main function is uh, the review and issuing of building permits for the projects in town, but also the enforcement of the zoning in town bylaws. Um, I mean, th that, you know, those three items make up our, our main functions. Thank you. And uh, in our just uh, on our email discussions, you mentioned that you have some new hires and some object objectives for them. Could you briefly tell the meeting about that? We do, that is correct. Um, yes, we, we were uh, short staffed on the, particularly on the building end. And we've recently, um, we recently filled a, a building inspector position and uh, an administrative position that, that will both help, um, help us catch up with our backlog of, of enforcement and, um, and the paperwork that goes along with it. Um, so we've already began some, some outreach with, with local businesses on, on 
<clears throat> on violations such as signs. And um, so we're hoping to catch up soon. Excellent. And um, you also, I believe, have some new processes, including affidavits regarding the building permit. Could you uh, detail that very quickly? And uh, are there some initial positive results you can share? Uh, yes, of course. So yes, we, we've added um, a final cost affidavit to the building permit applications, um, although not uh, not fully in effect uh, because of our, our staff shortages. Um, we've still seen uh, a positive result. Um, it, the, it, even just the initial uh, submittal of the applications, prices are coming in uh, more realistic and uh, uh, our, our revenues are, are up because of that. Excellent. And uh, could you briefly remind uh, citizens who are, might be listening at home as well as the body, the benefits of, of using um, the building, the inspectional services department, access to extra fees, access to your expertise, as well as the risks of not using them in safety and potential financial penalties for not pulling permits. Right. And also just to interject, just uh, uh, all residents at, at home, because uh, this is not limited just to uh, citizens. But yes, uh, Mr. I'm Champa. sorry. Yeah, of Thank course. Just trying to use some uh, more inclusive language. Mr. Champa. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, could you repeat the question, Mr. James? I just I just thought you could extol briefly on the benefits of using your department's expertise and the risks, both at the safety and penalty level for not. Uh, yes, of course. Um, so. Um, uh, particularly at a time like now where the, uh, the you know, construction's at, at the highest that we've ever seen it. Um, there's a, a, you know, there's a lot of, um, a lot of building that, that, you know, a lot of building going on that we're catching that's not um, up to code. There's a lot of unlicensed um, building going on. There's, um, there's a, um, there's homeowners being defrauded. There's a, there's a lot that's going on, and I mean, you know, um, we're we're definitely making a difference right now. Yep, you got your hands full, and and um and there's penalties if you don't pull permits, right? Yes, of course. If you're a licensed builder, uh, you would pay a triple fee on the um, on the permit that that you would have to get, um, and obviously, if you, if you're unlicensed, um, you know, you, you're not allowed to to be working there. And, and does the affidavit process provide a wrap a, a wrap around so that if more work is done than planned that they uh, also that, that also gets captured? Yeah, that's correct. That's why it's only a final affidavit um, that that's required. Um, the initial cost is put on the permit application and, and the final affidavit isn't submitted until the project is complete. Thank you very much, sir. That's a great uh, uh, update on the process there. Uh, great progress. Keep up the good work. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Jameson, and thank you, Mr. Ciampa. Um, let's see, we have uh, Mr. Kepline. Uh, let's take him next. Thank you, Mark Kepline, Precinct 9. Um, thank you, uh, Mr. Ciampa. I, I look forward to a new level of integrity um, going forward. Um, there's been a lot of... Uh, Problematic things in the past. Um, well, let's, uh, Mr. Kepler, let's not cast aspersions about. Uh, I don't know if that was directed at the, uh, uh, the previous director or uh, if, if there's an insinuation. Let's try to keep it. Safe. No. I, I, can you? Uh, I, and there's also an article somebody wants to hire an enforcement officer. Do you think that's necessary? I mean, I've seen, again, there's a church with six signs, and under the zoning bylaw, they're allowed two and this has gone on for i don't know years or decades with no enforcement and i've actually filed a complaint and the previous director refused to enforce the zoning bylaw so is that going to change going forward thank you yeah um and, and just to be clear i mean there's a difference between integrity and which is about honesty versus strictness of enforcement of rules and so let's just try to keep that clear um uh, so, Mr. Champa, can you answer Mr. Kepline's question? Yeah, sure. will, will there be stricter enforcement than there has been in the recent past? Yeah, Mike Champa, Director of Inspectional Services. Um, yes, of course. Uh, it, we've um, again, like I said, we you know we we struggled with the with staff shortages, but um, 
you know, and we've done the best we can, but we're, we're you know, we're, we filled the, we filled the vacancies and, and moving forward, we'll be um, addressing even the, uh, the issues in the past that we were unable to because of those staff, staff shortages. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Okay, and it appears we have uh, no more speakers in the speaking queue for uh, in inspections uh, budget. So let's now move on to uh, the final item that was held, which is it's not a budget per se, but the um, enterprise fund for uh, Arlington. This is a uh, letter E, so it's it's after all the numbered budgets. Um, it's after twenty seven. It'll go A through. E or F, I believe, and then the Arlington Young Arlington Youth Counseling Center Enterprise Fund, um, letter E. And uh, Ms. Benedict was interested in holding that, uh, so let's bring up Ms. Benedict. Hi, uh, Beth Benedict, Precinct Twenty One. I'm interested. I have a question about the um, this uh, psychiatric nurse that has been hired, which I'm happy to see. But there is an increase from forty-five thousand to ninety-nine thousand um, from the year twenty twenty-one to twenty twenty-two, and then it goes up to one hundred twenty-three thousand in twenty twenty-three. And I'm just, and, but a lot above it is a psychiatrist that goes down to zero. So I'm just kind of wondering more. Uh, I'd like more information about that. Is there that, anyone that can answer that question for me? Yeah. So let's see. Um... Let's see, is anyone on the panel? Let's take uh, uh, Mr. Chapdelaine. Do you have an answer for that? Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Adam Chapdelaine, town manager. Uh, I see uh, Ms. Bongiorno. I would actually defer to her if the moderator is okay with that. Absolutely. Uh, Director Bongiorno? Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Moderator. Thank you, um, Adam. This is Christine Bongiorno, Health and Human Services Director. So there seems to be an error in the FinCom report, and I apologize for that. So the psychiatric nurse um, was a position that we had um, a few a number of years ago. We had a psychiatrist who consulted and a psych nurse um, who provided direct treatment. That nurse and that psychiatrist combo uh, retired, and we switched over to a psychiatrist. So the 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 line, the amount is correct, but it actually should be up on the line above that. So it should be, it should read psychiatrist at 123. Um, we increased the number of hours that that psychiatrist was working from the 99 to the 123, um, utilizing some extra resources that we were able to um, access for this upcoming year due to the increase in need. We're seeing a significant increase in mental health needs among our youth populations. So um, we were able to, because this is an enterprise fund, which is run like a business, we were able to increase um, the services we offer and, and increase the revenue that comes in for, to, to address that. Okay, so um, Ms. Brazil, were you able to catch that change? I, I, did, I didn't entirely follow uh, what Ms. Bongiorno was suggesting about, about changing in this enterprise fund. Uh, Ms. Brazil, did you take note of that? I have a note and I believe I understood it and I can certainly get that clarified to make an administrative correction. Okay, and yeah, I, 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 I support that administrative change. Um, um, okay. Let's see. And let's see, uh, Ms. Benedict, did you, did you have anything else? If well, I, yeah, I'm just wondering about this. Make sure I'm clear. Of the, so the psychiatric nurse, there will not be hired. You're not, you will not be hiring another one. Um, you'll just there'll just be one psychiatrist. Are there any plans to hire more psychiatry nurses or uh, psychologists? Uh, Ms. Benjorno. Thank you, Christine Bondrano, Health and Human Services Director. At the, at the moment, we are sticking with just the psychiatrist. Uh, in, in order to have a psych nurse, we actually have to have a psychiatrist um, for our license from the state. So um, either way, we have to have the psych, psychiatrist. Um, if we were able to secure a psych nurse, if we were able to find one, again, this is a field that's very difficult to find um, individuals that 
are um, available. I mean, this is a very this is a very sought after position, and so it's hard to find people to fill these positions, um, particularly in in centers like this. So um, we're very fortunate to have a psychiatrist. At this moment, the the psych nurse um, position is not filled. We are we are only serving with um, the psychiatrist. Okay. Thank you very much. Great. Thank you, Ms. Benedict and Ms. Bongiorno. Uh, there. Um, okay. Seeing. No other speakers in the queue for the Arlington Youth Counseling Center Enterprise Fund. Uh, that is the last held uh, budget or fund. There was a question I saw briefly go by in the Q&A about uh, did we hold um, budget number 24, Health and Human Services? Uh, no, we did not. That was not held. There was a question. There was a notice of reconsideration consideration given at the end of last Wednesday's meeting, uh, but that doesn't really apply here. Uh, so we, we have now concluded the debates on the budgets. Uh, it's 9.29, but uh, let's uh, go ahead now with a vote on, let, let's open voting on Article 50. Uh, this will just take a few minutes and then we'll take a break uh, immediately after that, just so we can get this all wrapped up without having to uh, uh, interrupt our, our handling of Article 50. So, okay, so if you see, so, Voting is now open. If you see uh, a message uh, in your voting window saying that you are in wave three or in the next wave, just sit tight uh, and your wave will open up. Um, and we're, we're, uh, we're voting on Article 50, appropriation of the town budgets. So this is the entirety of, of all the budgets that we just discussed, plus the ones that uh, we did not discuss that are in uh, Appendix B of the uh, finance committee's report to town meeting. Um, and so you vote yes if you approve of these budgets. Uh, vote no if you do not approve of these budgets. Um, and if the budgets fail, it means we essentially are unable to appropriate uh, money for these budgets uh, for the next fiscal year. Uh, vote yes if you do wish to appropriate money for the budgets and the enterprise funds for uh, the next next fiscal year. Okay, we have over 200 votes in. It's going pretty quickly this time, so please vote as quickly as you can um, once voting opens up for you, which should be now. It should be open for everybody now. All, all three waves of precincts uh, should now be open for voting. Um, And this is a majority vote. Given the uh, amount of money involved, I think it's okay if we spend a little bit more time voting, make sure we get more votes in, because um, there's a lot of money at stake here. Okay, we just have a handful of folks left who've been recently active in the portal. Um, so let's just give another 30 seconds and then we'll uh, wrap up voting. And if you can't get your vote through in the portal, you could always use the Q&A or you can text or call Ms. Brazil. Um, 15 seconds until we close voting on Article 50, all the uh, appropriation of town budgets. 10 seconds. Five seconds. And let's close voting now on Article 50. Okay, and it passes uh, 224 in the affirmative, seven in the negative, and three abstentions, 97%. Um, uh, so Article 50 passes. So the, we have appropriations for the town budgets. So we will cycle through all these screens because this is the main motion. We'll only skip these screens for uh, votes on terminating debate. And once we have cycled through these screens, we will then take a 10 minute break. And when we come back, we will be uh, looking at Article 51, which is the capital budget. Which is separate from all these other budgets.
Okay, so that's all the precincts with the voting uh, displayed in all those precincts. So let's go ahead and uh, take a break now for 10 minutes. We'll come back at 944, uh, at which point we will take up the capital budget in Article 51. Thank you. Okay, so let's now bring up Article 51, capital budget. And to introduce this will be our chair of the um, uh, Capital Planning Committee, um, Dr. Yantar. So let's bring up Dr. Yantar to speak on the capital budget. And I believe he has slides too. Hello? Yes, I can hear you. Great. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Hi, everyone. I hope you and yours are all well. I'm uh, Timor Kaidi. Can you introduce yourself for everyone? Yes, I'm Timor Kaidi Antar, Capital Planning Committee Chair, speaking on Article 51, the capital budget. Next slide, please. This evening, I'm going to cover the five points that are shown here. Next slide, please. First, thank you. The capital plan is a group effort. Many thanks to our partners throughout the town. Uh, but mostly this was months of hard work by the capital planning committee. I've listed our members for you here. We are a combination of citizen appointees and school and town officials. If you're interested in our work, we invite you to attend our meetings, which are public. We also post notices from time to time asking for applicants when there are vacancies. And I especially want to call out the work of four members. Much gratitude to Kate Leary, Christopher Moore, Sandy Pooler, and Julie Wayman for their invaluable contributions of data organization, writing, editing, and production of the report to town meeting. I couldn't have done it without you. And a dedication to our former vice chair, Ryan Rarig, who sadly passed away over the winter. He taught us all so much about public service. This capital plan and report are for him. Next slide, please. Okay, second, the content of the report. It has a purple cover, much like this slide header, and I hope you've had a chance to read it. We lead off with an explanation of what you're voting on and that vote itself. This is on pages one through five. It's the capital budget for fiscal year 2023 starts on July 1st and runs through June 30th, 2023. It lists what capital items we'll buy in that year and what we'll pay in debt service. More detail on those in a minute. The report also talks about the full five-year plan with detail by department. It covers both fiscal 23, which is the only part you're voting on, and projections for the out years. And in the, in the appendix, we have several tables covering all the capital plan items. Next slide, please. Okay, third, our fiscal 23 acquisitions, which total $9.5 million. They're paid for with a combination of cash from general tax, other funds, and bonds. And they're listed in sections two, four, and five of article 51. We discuss it in the report. Here are the highlights. 62% of the capital budget is going, to ca is going to public works, mainly water and sewer maintenance and rehabilitation, also roadway and sidewalk repairs and improvements, as well as vehicle re replacements. Another 16% goes to schools, including information technology for education. That sum covers facility repairs, academic IT, and vehicle replacements. Yet another 14% goes to community safety, fire and police. That sum is mostly vehicles. In fact, about half of the total is paying for a replacement fire engine uh, for one that is currently 20 years old. The remainder of the budget, about three quarters of a million dollars, goes to capital needs for town buildings, recreation, IT, libraries, and all the other departments. 
The portion that we financed through bonds in section five comes to two and a quarter million dollars in total. I highlight these because they obligate future town meetings to pay their debt service. So they specifically require a two thirds vote by this town meeting. Next slide, please. And that's a good segue to item four, debt service. For fiscal 23, it's $19.1 million. This is an article 51, section three, and is mostly paid by cash from general tax. It covers principal and interest on all of the bonds that the town has issued in the past. With a few exceptions, our debt is non-exempt. It fits in the capital plan approved by town meeting. Exempt debt is outside the capital plan. It's authorized by townwide debt exclusion referenda. These are big ticket items. The clearest example is Arlington High School. We have to pay interest on both non-exempt and exempt debt, and here's where we, where we pay it. Next slide, please. Apart from debt exclusions, though, the town keeps within the capital plan. And that's my fifth point. Its size in Bristol 23 is $9.1 million. You see it in this table shown here, which is also in your reports. The 5% rule limits the capital budget to, you guessed it, 5% of the town budget. We target that level in both fiscal 23 and in the out years. And we've achieved it in all years of this plan. This rule constrains the town to live within its means and thus to make room for some new high priority item, something else has to give. Next slide, please. And so in conclusion, I hope you've had the chance to read the full report. The committee and I are available to take your questions. Please vote yes on 51 and please stay safe. Thank you all very much for your time and attention. That concludes the Capital Planning Committee's presentation to town meeting. Great, thank you, Dr. Yantar. Uh, so uh, let's take uh, Mr. Leone now from, uh, from the speaking queue. Name and person, please. John Leone, Precinct 8. I have two questions concerning uh, budget five, number nine, additional classrooms for the peer school. Are we building additional classrooms on this peer school or what are we doing with our hundred thousand dollars? Yeah, uh, so Dr. Yonktar, do you have an a answer for where the hundred thousand dollars is going for the additional classrooms in the peer school? Is uh, Mr. Mason available from the school department? I don't believe we asked Mr. Mason here for that. Is there someone else who might uh, know the answer to that? All right, well, I'll try, to, I'll try to cover it in his absence. So uh, there is the need to do a bit of uh, reconfiguring of Pierce in order to uh, make room for additional uh, students. And so this is a, a small payment for that reconfiguration. Are we, we're, we're, not building, the, we're, not, we're not building an additional, you know, we're not, not building an addition on, onto, Pierce, onto Pierce School. We're doing some reconfiguration work within, within the building. Within the current building envelope. Correct. Okay. Uh, what uh, what rooms would we be losing? Or making the other rooms smaller? I'm afraid I don't have the answer to that one. Okay, thank you. How about uh, number five, number 11, party school roof replacement? Is the roof defective? And is there anything, we haven't had the Hardy School online for too many years, as I remember. Since it's since it was rebuilt, um, what's going on with that? Yeah, Hardy School is actually yeah. The Hardy School is actually one of our older um, rebuilt schools. It's the uh, second oldest uh, after uh, Bracket. It was uh, uh, renovated in two thousand one, and this is actually an issue that we are now experiencing, which is that um, after the successful rebuild of uh, all of our elementary schools. 
the ones that were done first are getting, you know, uh, out of their teenage years and they're starting to need some, uh, some further um, work. And that's, uh, so that's one of the things that we're facing right now, uh, uh, in both in terms of envelope, so roofs, uh, also things like HVAC. We were fortunate to have HVAC money in the form of some of the federal ARPA aid to uh, address that need. Um, but yeah, the roofs, are, and it's not the only, it's not only at, uh, at Hardy, but it's happening in a few of the buildings that we are looking at doing uh, roof work to prevent uh, further um, infiltration. So it's a common, um, normal common maintenance. I'm glad to see that there's a plan to maintain the buildings after we spent a bunch of money building them. Thank you, Mr. Yontar. Thank, thank you, Mr. Maloney. And thank, thank you, Mr. Moderator. Thank you. Uh, okay, let's take uh, Mr. Harrelson next. Is Mr. Harrelson able to speak? Let's see. Uh, name and precinct, please. Uh, see, Mr. Harrelson, it's, it appears that you're 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 allowed to speak at this point. Um, is it possible you're muted from your end? Um, let's see. Let me try a different microphone. Can you hear me now? Yes, yes, I can. Go ahead. Name and precinct. Thank you. Yes, uh, Brooks Harrelson, Precinct 16. Thank you. This is a minor curiosity only. Section 2, Item 11, Town Microcomputer Program. Could I find some explanation of what that is? Oh, sure. Uh, um, yeah, I'd be happy to. Uh, through, through the moderator, I'd like to ask uh, our town CIO, uh, Ms. Shepard, to uh, address that. Yeah, M Ms. Shepard, can you answer Mr. Harrelson's question? Good evening, everyone, and thank you, Mr. Moderator. So for the town microcomputer program, it actually covers quite a few things. It's to refresh first and foremost. I'm sorry, uh, I just, uh, I'm sorry, uh, name and title, please. Just. Oh, I'm so sorry, Patricia Shepard, Chief Information Officer. So for the town microcomputer program, we cover first and foremost, all of the administrative laptops and desktops for the staff, but also um, it also will include any switches that might be end of life, servers that we might need to get, and then obviously printers for the staff as well. Well, thank you. I wouldn't have called all of the microcomputers. I think of things like Arduinos, et cetera. So, but thank you very much. Of course, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Great, thank you. Um, uh, okay, let's, uh, let's take uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Benson next. I don't think we've heard from him before. Thank you, Mr. Moderator, Eugene Benson, Precinct 10. And I have a question about um, item, uh, uh, paragraph five, item three, the engine pumper to replace number 1025. And my question is whether the fire department looked to purchase an all electric um, pumper, the Los Angeles uh, Fire Department recently brought on um, its first all electric pumper. And with our town um, aiming toward uh, zero net emissions and our town bylaw, separate bylaw, requiring us to purchase the most fuel efficient vehicle when appropriate, I wonder if the fire department could comment on whether it had looked or will look at purchasing an electric pumper. Thank you. Okay. Um, do we have anyone from the fire department who can answer that question, please? Uh, or uh, Mr. moderator, since I don't see uh, Chief Kelly, let me take a shot at this, and then uh, we'll see where we get, get, get from there. So. Sure. Uh, we have, uh, we, uh, Mr. Chapterline is off, also offered to answer, but uh, Dr. Yantar, Yon you can go ahead if you want. I'll just start by saying that um, I was part of the uh, subcommittee that reviewed the uh, fire department's requests um, 
we did not discuss a an all electric uh, engine. Um, I am pleased to hear that uh, they are becoming available. I didn't know that they were available, uh, that they were being um, used in large cities such as Los Angeles. That's great news. Um, the issue with uh, large heavy duty vehicles like engines, like uh, public works equipment and so forth is that they do require a lot of uh, uh, more uh, engine power. And so um, they're a little bit further back on the, um, on the adoption uh, frontier of uh, electric vehicles, um, but uh, uh, so we did. We I know that we didn't discuss that. Uh, I don't know if there's a uh, issue in terms of availability or price point. Certainly, there is the need to replace this pumper. It's been uh, it's been in service for 20 years, and uh, that's the life cycle for these vehicles. And it's been in the the, the planning process to purchase this uh, on this time frame for the last few years. Uh, I would. Be happy to defer to also to uh, the town manager if he has for uh, items to add. Sure, uh, Mr. Chaplain, anything to add to that? I thank you, Mr. Moderator, Adam Chaplain, town manager. Um, I, I would I would only add. I just quickly looked it up after Mr. Benson raised it. I I think that news literally broke in Los Angeles today of that pumper being purchased. I think we'll have to research that technology more deeply. Um, I did quickly see that the price tag for that particular unit was nearly 50% more than what's budgeted for, for this pumper. Um, and, I, and I think we'd have to get understand the range and the impact of winter temperatures on that range. Um, any of us who drive EVs, I think we know the range goes down by about 50% in a winter climate. So I think we, we'd have to you know kick the proverbial tires before we would be able to determine if that technology was feasible here in its current state, but it's certainly something we want to look at as time goes forward. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, what I read about the pumper that the uh, uh, Los Angeles Fire Department brought on is that it's the first electric one in the United States. So it is the leading edge of the technology. But I just hope that uh, when the next pumper needs to be replaced, that there will be a serious look at moving toward electric vehicles. From what I've read about the LAPD one, it seems like it would be a good choice. Although, as you know, it is more expensive, but over the life cycle, it might not be. That's it. Thank you so much. Great. Thank you. Uh, let's take uh, Mr. Jameson next. Name and precinct, please. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Gordon Jameson, precinct 12. Um, during, I, I noted earlier in the meeting that uh, some concerns were raised by a bracket parent during our precinct meetings uh, earlier this uh, spring. And the second one uh, was about the bracket, bracket school playgrounds, which are now closed and either fenced in or tied off with uh, danger tape. As I understand it, and Mr. Moore kindly reached out uh, after I asked the first question with some information that um, the $80,000 budgeted um, will provide for a short-term fix. Um, I want to. I want to have. I would like to get confirmation of that, and that's especially important because I'm very pleased to see. But simultaneous to this issue at the school, Robbins Farm Playground uh, is, has a rebuild structure through the Community Preservation Act. So um, obviously, the bracket playgrounds are going to get a higher use level, while the Robbins Farm Playground is. Uh, um, obviously out of school hours, but um, while, the bracket, while the Robbins Farm is under construction. So can we get some surety that the Brackett School Playgrounds will be operable uh, next fall? Sure. Uh, so, Dr. Yontar, yeah. Yeah, I'll, 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 uh, so yes, um, there are funds um, that the uh, Arlington Public Schools are tapping to make immediate fixes to the Brackett Playground. And those will take place over this summer, 2022, to be ready for fall 2022. And as you noted, um, Mr. Jameson, those are intended to be short-term fixes to last a few years. Um, and that should at least relieve the, the uh, uh, being roped off as they are currently and being able to be used. Uh, at the same time, as you also noted, um, if the uh, Community Preservation Act funds are uh, approved, then that uh, has budget for the Robbins Farm Park Playground um, across the street from the Racket Playground. Um, 
So that would be um, also a benefit to the students at Bracket. Now, longer term, um, our fiscal 23 capital budget includes $80,000 for the study of the Bracket Playground uh, it will take place over the fiscal year, that is to say, this or the same as the uh, school year 2022 through 2023. That would then figure out the long term fix. We will see what the study tells us, get a better cost estimate, et cetera. Uh, and then uh, we will re examine that in the next capital plan. We currently have a hold of uh, $800,000 of capacity for, for fiscal 25. Um, but we also re-examine the capital plan every year because things do change. And if there is room and if the uh, result of the study uh, tells us that uh, you know, what can be done and what it will cost, we would certainly be able to consider putting that in in fiscal 24. But in the meantime, the short-term fixes should be lasting for a few years and taking care of that. One quick clarification, if I may. Um, who's yeah. funding the short-term fixes? The, Dr. That's the Arlington Public Schools. I would uh, defer to their representatives, but I don't think they're here tonight. No, I, I just, uh, that's, uh, I'm fine. Um, thank you very much, Mr. Moderator. Just want to know who's doing it. Thank you. Okay, so we do have, uh, uh, there was a request uh, for doc Dr. Holman to uh, connect. We'll see if we can actually get her on uh, to potentially answer that question. Um, Dr. Holman being the, the superintendent of schools, of course. Um, uh, so maybe we'll circle back to that if we're able to get Dr. Holman uh, to connect to the meeting. Uh, in the meantime, is there anything else, Mr. Jameson? Okay, so you know, let's move on to uh, Mr. Tremblay. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Ed Tremblay, Precinct 19. Uh, under Section 2, well, Sort of about uh, uh, item six. I was just curious how much uh, we wound up spending on the uh, steps and patio, the uh, the heated steps and patio in front of uh, town hall. Uh, Dr. Yantar, do you have an answer to that? How much have we spent on the heated steps and patio in front of town hall? I mean, it looks beautiful. How much did we spend for that? I was just curious. Is that within this budget or was that? Oh, this was in the prior budget. Um, I have huh. to look it up. I don't have it at, at my fingertips. Okay. Yes, never mind. Yeah, if, if it's not in this budget, I'm going to call that out of scope. Never mind. Yeah. Um, item 14, bike rack installation. Where, where, what, uh, what are we, where are these bike racks? One rack, multiple racks? What, what's that about? Yeah, Dr. Yantar? It, it's multiple racks. Uh, is director rate available? I don't believe we have. Uh, I am here. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, Ms. Ray, go ahead, please. Jennifer Ray, Director of Planning and Community Development. Yes, there are many racks, and they are being installed in consultation with the Parks and Rec Commission um, and the Parks Department um, at various places across town at playgrounds. Um, and we've been able to purchase a number of racks and are planning to get them installed this uh, spring. Thank you. So, this has nothing to do with blue bikes. That's correct. Okay, thank you. How about uh, 16 and 17? Um, what, are, what are we getting for our, our engineering consulting services? Uh, Dr. Yantar, can, can you answer that? This is also under planning, the uh, design and engineering consultants. Uh, Ms. Wright? This is still under the section two, line 16 and 17. Jennifer Wright, Director of Planning and Community Development. Yes, we are planning on using those uh, funds in order to hire consultants when we need them for assistance with uh, engineering or consulting to help us to start new projects. We often have um, different uh, requests that come into our department to research things uh, that are well beyond the skill set of the individuals who are staffed in the department and also beyond the capacity of our engineering department. So we've requested these funds in order to be able to hire people on occasion if we need that additional assistance. Thank you. Will this be uh, MAPC? Uh, will you be hiring MAPC for any of these? What is that? Uh, I'm not sure what you're referring to, uh, Dr. Yantar. You... I'm not sure he's referring to either. Metropolitan Area Planning Council. We would be issuing a request 
for proposals from consultants. Um, he, not specifically Metropolitan Area Planning Council, they may apply, um, but it would be open to any uh, consultant to apply for these services. Thank you. Okay. And line 17, roadway consulting services. Uh, we, we, we do have a town engineer. Is, is he able to do any of this uh, design work? Uh, Dr. Yonkers? That's, that's there directed to uh, Mr. Rodemacher if he's available. Uh, Mr. Rodemacher, can you answer that? Like if, if our staffed engineer could uh, could handle that? Uh, Michael Rodemacher, Director of Public Works. But, uh, similar to um, Planning Department, there are times when work, work we need is beyond our ability to say, uh, for example, maybe a, a detailed survey um, or other engineering um, work that we don't have capacity in-house we use this to supplement okay and how about uh line 20 traffic signal upgrades mr rademacher uh, mike rademacher director of public works i'm not sure i understand if there's a question there oh, uh, I, I, I got, go ahead mr Trumbull. we're going to spend sixty thousand dollars on traffic signal upgrades what, what are we upgrading we have a, a fairly aged um, traffic signal system and it's used to uh, upgrade uh, signal boxes or um, or um, pedestrian um, push button actuators or, or the lights themselves can we uh, can we do something about the uh, light timing and some of the intersections in town there or, or areas in town that are problematic like in front of the stop and shop or uh, in Arlington Center with uh, with us uh, one place or maybe down by Bates Road and Linwood, where the traffic signals seem to have nothing to do with each other, except that they're frequently red. It, that would probably be more of a an engineering study to look at the timing and, and not a, a capital issue. Okay, so there's no way for that. All right. Um, Big Belly Solar Power Trash Compactors, line 34. Um, I'm just curious how much. Uh, if we uh, save enough in, in collection fees, you know, or well, collection expenses to justify uh, $75,000 for a trash can. Uh, Mr. Chaplin. Thank you, Mr. Moderator, Adam Chaplin, town manager. Um, for, first off, it's not, it's not one trash can uh, for $75,000. They're about $5,000 each. Uh, mm -hmm. re really the, the main priority or the main impetus for pursuing this is uh, with outdoor dining, there was a major change in workflow that occurred over the course of the pandemic, which we expect to continue going forward with many restaurants and many residents really liking outdoor dining. And that workflow is items that used to be thrown out in a restaurant in a private dumpster picked up by a private hauler were now being thrown in waste receptacles along, along Mass Ave and in some cases on Broadway. And our staffing uh, isn't enough to keep up with that pretty significantly increased trash load. By installing these uh, big belly trash compactors in those high traffic areas where there is outdoor dining, not only will we be able to better address uh, that workload issue because these containers can keep much more trash due to the compaction, but will also help keep the neighborhoods and the business districts cleaner, not having overflowing trash cans, rather having it all contained within these devices. Well, that, and and that that's that's good. Uh, does this include uh, maintenance expenses? I have seen those things break. We are, we are coming up just uh, uh, on, on the uh, the seven minute mark here. Um, so Adam Chaplin, town manager. I'll quickly say my understanding is the price we would pay would include uh, a somewhat long term warranty that would cover maintenance for some period of time. All right. Very good. Thank you very much. Great. Thank you. Uh, we do have uh, Dr. Homan uh, on the panel now. Uh, so let's bring her up. I know she was trying to connect earlier. Um, was there a question previously that uh, that uh, uh, Dr. Yontar? That, that, that I, like I believe the question was from Mr. Jamison. It was the question around the uh, source of the $80,000 that would be used mm -hmm. to perform short term repairs on the Braggett Playground over this summer. Yeah. Dr. Homan, do, do you have an answer to, to that question? 
Sure. I believe that the intention was to use um, some of the revolving funds that we receive from building rentals to perform some of the short-term adjustments to the playground while we await those funds to be available via capital planning um, in future years as planned previously. Great. Well, thank you for joining us to answer that question. Appreciate no it. Problem. Um, let's see. Oh, and the, was there a question also about the, uh, the Pierce School or did we cover that? Dr. Yantar? Uh, perhaps if you're, if you be able to, Dr. Homan, uh, the question was regarding the, um, the Pierce School um, additional classrooms. Um, my understanding is that that's not, you know, it's certainly not an addition. That would be far more money than $100,000, but it is uh, a reconfiguration of classrooms in order to, um, in order to accommodate the needs in the school. Uh, do you have any more information about that? Certainly. Also, um, good evening, town meeting members. It's uh, no problem jumping on to answer a few questions. Uh, the peer school is in a situation where they have a little bit of a turnover of space. Um, so they are going, to, they have a part of our daycare, which is available for staff members, um, children to attend. And that space is used very differently from what it will be used for um, next year, which will be one of our regular classrooms because they're expanding to have a fifth grade classroom. And so re-outfitting that space so that it is accommodating of instruct for instructional purposes um, is what is necessary. So it's not a, a rebuild or an addition or anything. It's just re-outfitting a space so that it's appropriate for the use that it will be put to. Okay. Thank you again, Dr. Hohen. Yeah. Okay. So let's take uh, Mr. McCabe next. We are at the, we're at the, the half an hour mark uh, into this article. Um, Let's uh, bring up Mr. McCabe. Name and precinct, please. Debate on Article 51 and all matters before it. All right, so uh, Mr. McCabe is uh, moving to terminate debate uh, on Article 51. Uh, do we have a second? We have a second from Mr. Ciano. Um, Okay, so let's uh, bring up a vote on terminating debate on Article 51, the capital budget. Okay, so if you're in favor of terminating debate on Article 51, the capital budget, uh, vote yes. Uh, if you want to continue debate on the capital budget, uh, press uh, vote no. Okay, the waves of voting are still opening up, are still opening up so um, they should be, I believe they should all be opened now. So um, please get your votes in. And this is a two thirds vote to terminate debate on article 51. Okay, so among recently active uh, town meeting members in the portal, there's only a handful that have not voted yet. Let's give another 15 seconds before we close voting on terminating debate. 10 seconds. Five seconds. Okay, let's close voting. And debate is terminated with 189 votes in the affirmative, 31 negative, and three abstentions. Uh, so we are not going to cycle through the screens. We're going to go, uh, we're going to proceed directly to voting on the main motion, 
which is the capital budget. Um, and Dr. Yantar, do, do you have the, uh, is there a single figure that we could cite for the entirety of the capital budget? If not, folks can just look through the um, capital planning committee report. Sorry, the, um, the size of the capital budget uh, for acquisition expense, this is what the total cost of what the town is buying in the coming fiscal year is $9,484,877. Okay. So I think it's fair to say that this is for appropriating uh, roughly nine and a half million dollars for the capital budget. Um, so if you're in favor of that appropriation, uh, you would vote yes. If you're against that appropriation, uh, then you would vote no. And this is a two thirds vote. and plus the debt service. Thank you, Mr. Jameson. So if you're in favor of the, uh, the capital budget that's been presented here and then the uh, capital planning committee's report to town meeting, then you'll vote yes. If you are against that budget um, and you don't want to appropriate that money, uh, then vote no. This is a two thirds vote. Okay, most folks have voted. Uh, I'm still waiting for several more folks. So all the waves of voting should be open by now. So please get your votes in for Article 51, the capital budget. If you're having trouble voting in the portal, you can you can uh, send your vote in through the Q&A and Zoom. Okay, it's just a handful of recently active uh, members who have not voted yet. So let's, let's give another 30 seconds. Okay, 20 seconds until we close voting on Article 51, capital budget. 15 seconds. 10 seconds. Five seconds. Okay, let's close voting. And the capital budget passes. Article 51 passes 222 votes in the affirmative, three in the negative, two abstentions. And we will wait to cycle through the screens. Once we've seen votes for all precincts, we will proceed to Article 53. because Article 52 was already covered in the consent agenda. Okay, just a couple more screens. Okay, so let's now proceed to Article 53. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. What's that? Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Hey, thank you, Dr. Yantar. Uh, so Article 53, appropriation uh, related to financing of construction uh, or of sewers and sewerage facilities. Um, that's it. So this was in the, the, the Finance Committee report. Um, we're continuing with the, the, the financial articles. Uh, Mr. Foskett, did you want to speak to the uh, Finance Committee report on this? Uh, Charles, thank you, Mr. Moderator. Charles Foskett, Precinct 10 and Chair of the Finance Committee. Uh, th these are articles, uh, this and the next article are 
similar articles that we vote every every town meeting. It is uh, to enable a town to borrow interest-free money from the uh, MWRA to improve the infrastructure, water and sewer infrastructure, and the um, the loans get repaid uh, via the uh, user fees in the water sewer enterprise fund. Um, let's see, we have a couple of speakers, Nikki. Let's take uh, Ms. Anderson. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Kristen Anderson, Precinct 11. I pulled Article 53, Appropriation Financing of Construction or of sewers and sewerage facilities from the consent agenda in order to raise awareness about the reconstruction of our sanitary sewer lines. Like all area municipalities, Arlington has aging sewer infrastructure. Arlington has sanitary sewer pipes where groundwater and stormwater enter our sanitary sewer lines through what is called I and I, or infiltration and inflow. Infiltration means there are cracks in the sanitary sewer pipes that allow groundwater into the sanitary sewer lines. Inflow means illegal hookups like basement sump pumps or foundation drains that are hooked up to the sanitary sewer. This additional sewer flow from infiltration and inflow occurs when it rains. Additional flow from groundwater and stormwater in our sanitary sewer lines can add to the existing capacity problems throughout the MWRA's regional sewer system. Capacity problems in the MWRA's regional sewer system can result in untreated combined sewage discharges into the Alewife Brook. I wanna thank the town meeting for giving me a few moments to raise awareness about this. And I ask that you please vote in favor of this article. Thank you. Thank you. Let's take uh, Mr. Leone next. Good evening, Mr. Moderator. I have um, questions that pertain to both articles 53 and 54. So I'm gonna address them to the chair and to hopefully Mr. Rademacher. And, and if pleases the uh, chair, I would like to have him answer questions on both. The same questions apply to both articles. So if he could just address both and save us a little time. Sure, I'll, I'll allow that, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, the first question is how many miles or feet of pipe does this cover for each year? And how does that compare to the past years? Uh, Mr. Rademacher? Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Michael Rademacher, <laughs> Director of Public Works. Uh, on the water side, the funding that we are looking to um, borrow would, would allows us to replace approximately one mile of uh, water main annually. But on the sewer side, it's not so much a um, linear feet of pipe uh, uh, standard that we look to repair. We have um, set up a program where we divided the town into about 13 sections and every year we look to make improvements to one of those 13 sections of town we we do televised inspections we we do um we look for the the worst situations of groundwater infiltration or structural defects we design repairs and then construct them so the funding we receive allows us to uh, maintain one of those 13 sections in town and annually we rotate through those um, over a 13 year period and then start again so the second question is, what's the overall plan for replacement of the entire system? How many feet per year or how many years? Mr. Rademacher? Thank you, Michael Rademacher, Director of Public Works. Uh, as I stated on the water side, we're, we're currently replacing a mile a year, but I, I, that's something I've, and the engineering department have been discussing, and we would like to ramp that up to, to two miles a year. We have about 130 miles of pipe in the town and I believe it would be a, a much better goal to have pipe that's about 70 years old if we were able to replace two miles a year rather than 130 years old. Uh, on the sewer side it'll just be a ongoing uh, annual um, inspection and maintenance throughout the town. We don't necessarily replace the sewer pipe when possible we line it or repair it in place. Okay the last question is we've been budgeting the same amount for as many years as I can remember, more or less. 
with minimal increases for inflation and higher costs. Um, is this amount adequate to complete the plan with these higher costs factored in? Thank you, Michael Rademacher, Director of Public Works. On the water side, we, we have uh, been bumping that number up a little bit just to be able to maintain the one mile replacement um, goals. But obviously, if we wanted to bump that to two miles, that would number would need to be significantly increased. On the sewer side, the number has actually come down a little bit as because we're entering into the end of that first 13 year cycle and uh, we don't need to do inspections or design as much because we know where our problems are. But as we start the program over again, and as you've mentioned, costs are increasing, I imagine those costs will start to creep up over years as well. Is there a plan to ask the Finance Committee for more money? Mr. Rademacher? Uh, well, we will be looking at that for future budget cycles, yes. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Rademacher. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. All right, thank you, Mr. Leone. Uh, let's take, uh, Ms. Murray, next. Caroline Murray, Precinct 12. I move that we terminate debate. Okay, we have a motion to terminate debate. Uh, do we have a second? Uh, we have a second from Mr. Hamlin. Uh, so let's, take, let's uh, open voting for termination of debate of Article 53. So if you, let's see. Okay, so voting uh, at least is starting to open in waves. Um, if you are in favor of terminating debate on Article 53, uh, vote yes. If you want to continue debate on Article 53, vote no. Okay, the waves are still opening up. So if you see a message that your voting controls will be enabled, in the next wave or in two more waves, uh, just sit tight and within several seconds, uh, that'll open up for you. Okay, all waves of voting should now be open. This is a vote on uh, terminating debate on Article 53. If you're in favor of terminating debate, uh, vote yes. If you wanna continue debate, vote no. And this is a two thirds vote. And, uh, 200, 216 votes cast now. Um, so just wait a little bit longer. So several folks who've been active in the portal uh, have not voted yet. So if you haven't voted, please get your votes in. And if you're having trouble in the portal, although there haven't been any, I haven't seen any widespread complaints or any complaints uh, about voting in the portal tonight. Uh, but if you're having trouble, you can always use the Q&A to submit your vote. Okay. Uh, let's just wait another, uh, let's see. Let's just wait another 15 seconds. Okay, 10 seconds until we close voting on termination of debate on Article 53, five seconds. Okay, let's close voting. Okay, debate is terminated. Uh, if 209 votes in the affirmative, 11 in the negative, three abstentions, let's go straight to voting on the main motion. For Article 53, appropriation for financing of construction or of uh, of construction of sewers and, and sewerage facilities. And this is a two-thirds vote on the main motion.
the voting should be opening up in waves. And just the, 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 the vote language is uh, while we're waiting for votes to come in, uh, uh, vote yes if you're in favor of the sum of $800,000 uh, being appropriated for the purpose of financing the construction or reconstruction of sewers and sewerage facilities, inflow or infiltration reduction or system rehabilitation, including costs incidental and related thereto. There's more, but you can read that in the uh, annotated uh, warrant uh, under Article 53 for the details. Okay, all waves of voting should be open, and we have uh, 218 votes in. We're still missing uh, about 15 from recently active members. So let's just wait a, bit, a little bit longer. If you, have, if you have not been able to get your vote in yet, please get it in. And if you have trouble in the portal, you could always use the Q&A to, to submit your, your vote that way. Or you can uh, contact uh, Ms. Brazil. Okay, so another 30 seconds until we close voting on Article 53. 20 seconds is the main motion. It is a two thirds vote. Ten seconds until we close voting on Article Fifty Three. Five seconds, <laughs> and let's close voting. And it passes with wow, one hundred percent of the vote, two hundred twenty-three in the affirmative, and that's all. Okay, so we'll. Just wait to cycle through the screens here. And then after we're done seeing displaying all the votes across all the precincts, we'll move on to Article uh, 54. Okay, so let's open up Article 54, appropriation for financing of construction or reconstruction of water mains and water facilities. And this article was on the consent agenda initially. It was removed by uh, Ms. Band. So uh, uh, if Ms. Band is interested in speaking on this, uh, happy to bring her up. Um, so if we're not able to bring her up right away, we can at least, we can bring up someone who is waiting in the speaking queue. Uh, let's bring up Mr. Jockett. Oh, um, he's no longer in the queue. Let's uh, take uh, Mr. Kepline. Hi, thank you, Mark Kepline, Precinct 9. Uh, I got a communication from a concerned resident about um, discrepancies he's seen in water bills amongst uh, residents. And there's a few people, including a member of town meeting, who've got showing virtually no water usage. And so he's curious how that could be, you know, and for a long period of time, I don't know if they're using bottled water to shower or bathe, but they're not showing up as, as using hardly any water at all. And I've got a yeah. copy of a water bill that I can yeah. share. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure if town meetings would be the best place to kind of try to debug what happened in that particular case, but uh, we'll bring up Mr. Uh, Rademacher just uh, briefly, if, if, if this is 
uh, something that you've seen uh, like wide, as a widespread issue or might have some insights into? Thank you, Michael Rademacher, Director of Public Works. Uh, we do from time to time see um, weird things at the pro properties with with water use and um, friends, and we do look to contact those residences and get in the house and look at the meters. Um, we are also are going through a meter replacement project, so if there are defective meters, um, we will be getting those replaced. Yeah, th this sounds like a, a, a like residents should be contacting the director of public works, Mr. Rademacher, for further questions or the town manager who can send those questions. Okay, I can email that to you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, okay, seeing no one else in the speaking queue, um, let's proceed to voting on Article 54. Okay, so. Uh, if your wave is up uh, and active for voting, please go ahead and vote. This is the main motion. There, this is not a termination of debate vote. Uh, we're just going straight to voting on the main motion because we've exhausted our speaker queue. Um, so uh, if you are in favor of the main motion of Article 54, uh, uh, the appropriation for financing of construction or reconstruction of water mains and water facilities, vote yes. If you um, are not in favor of that appropriation, vote no. And just a reminder that the uh, as we're waiting for the votes to, to roll in, um, uh, this was a an article that was on the consent agenda. If uh, if if you if you held an, uh, an article and so that it's removed, it was removed from the consent agenda. Uh, please try to be available to speak on it, so we can understand why it was uh, not handled uh, in a more efficient way through the consent agenda. Thank you. Okay, we have 215 votes in, still waiting for about 16 recently active members in the portal. And this is this is a two-thirds vote for this appropriation. Okay, the number of votes cast is starting to taper off. Let's just give another uh, 20 seconds. If you have trouble voting in the portal, you could always, 15 seconds, you could always vote in, through the Q&A. 10 seconds until we close voting on Article 54. Five seconds. Okay, let's close voting. And Article 54 passes with 100% of the vote, 218 in the affirmative. Uh, we'll just wait for these screens to cycle through. And when that's done, we will move ahead to Article 57. And let's see. Still waiting for the uh, display of the voting screens across precincts. And while we're waiting for that, um, Article 57 was also on the consent agenda. It was held by Mr. Wagner. So if Mr. Wagner wants to get on the speaker queue, uh, we can get ready to queue him up um, when we take on Article 57. This is an appropriation for town celebrations and events. Actually, before we take Mr. Wagner, I do want to give uh, 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 Mr. Foskett uh, an opportunity to uh, speak to the vote, uh, the, the Finance Committee report, uh, uh, vote on Article 57. And then we'll go to Mr. Wagner. 
Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Charles Foskett, Precinct 10 and Chair of the Finance Committee. Uh, this is a uh, vote for um, celebrations and um, uh, honorifics that we routinely have. Um, we haven't had town day in a couple of years because of COVID, but uh, there's nothing uh, exceptional in, um, in this article. Okay, uh, so let, let's, uh, let's take Mr. Wagner now um, to speak on this article. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Carl Wagner, Precinct 15, can you hear me okay? Yes, I can. Go ahead, please. Thank you very much. I wanted to make two points uh, here. One of them is that Town Day is actually a uh, September 13th, 1766 commemoration of Uncle Sam's birthday. Uncle Sam was born in Arlington, and I hope that we'll consider uh, putting his name back on our Town Day. The second point I'd like to make is uh, all the time that I lived in the town when I was young, and then uh, since I've moved back in the 90s, we had uh, a fireworks display uh, on town day in the evening, which people loved. And I, I hope that we will consider putting that back. At one point, we raised funds from the community, and uh, we seem to have completely ceased. And perhaps in celebration of coming back from COVID, we could start having uh, the fireworks with our town day slash Uncle Sam day. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Uh, and we have no more speakers. Uh, so let's proceed directly to voting on Article 57. So let's open voting. And this is a majority vote uh, on uh, appropriating uh, funds for town celebrations and events, such as Town Day. And while you're waiting to vote or waiting after having voted, um, I'll just point out that Samuel Wilson's not only the namesake for uh, or the inspiration for Uncle Sam, but also uh, Sam Wilson of the Avengers, Falcon, and later the uh, uh, Captain America. So, okay, this is Article 57 appropriation for town uh, celebrations and events, such as Town Day. Or as Mr. Wagner uh, points out, uh, um, Samuel Wilson. Town Day for Okay, we have about 200 votes in, still uh, waiting for several more. If you haven't voted yet, please try to get your vote in. All, all waves of precincts should be uh, able to vote now. We have some votes coming into the Q&A. Okay, so let's just wait another, uh, let's wait another 20 seconds until we close voting on Article 57, Appropriation for Town Celebrations and Events. 15 seconds. 10 seconds. Five seconds until we close voting. And let's go ahead and close voting. And Article 57 passes, uh, 218 votes in the affirmative, one in the negative. And we will wait for all uh, the display of all the uh, precincts votes um, since this is the main motion. And after this, we will take up Article 60, Appropriation for Blue Bites. Uh, I will note that it is 10.49 PM. Um, let's see how far we can get into Article 60. Okay, so let's uh, 
Let's go to Article 60. This is also a Finance Committee uh, article uh, at the request of the Department of Planning and Community Development. Uh, so let's, let's start with Mr. Fosca and see if he wants to speak to the uh, to the Finance Committee report on this, and then uh, maybe we can uh, bring up uh, Ms. Rate, uh, Director of the uh, uh, Planning and Community Development Department. Uh, Mr. Fosca. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Um, Annie O'Court, a member of the Finance Committee and a town meeting member, um, Charles Foskett, Precinct 10, uh, and a, a town meeting member will speak for the Finance Committee on this article. Okay. I'm sorry, who, who did you want to bring up for that? Uh, I'm sorry, Annie LaCourt, former select. Oh, okay. Uh, let's bring up board uh, member. Ms. LaCourt. Um, Annie LaCourt, Precinct 15. Can you hear me, Greg? Yes, I can. Go ahead. Okay. Um, so the majority of the committee, um, the finance committee, were persuaded that this is an appropriate investment in an important mode of transportation that serves as an alternative to cars and fits in with the town's effort to combat, combat climate change. The request is for funds to support the continuation of the Blue Bike Program and expand the number of bikes and locations. Um, although this program has seen extensive use, the 10K or so trips don't reach the volume necessary to eliminate all costs to the town. The request is for funds to subsidize ridership for the next two years. At the end of that two years, the program will be evaluated again. The expectation is that with the additional bikes available, the program will meet the trip threshold required to eliminate the cost to the town under the contract with Lyft subsidiary motivant. In any case, this is a one-time allocation and not a permanent increase in the budget. Okay, thank you, Ms. LaCourt. Uh, and so this was on the consent agenda originally. Uh, it was removed by Mr. Kepline and Mr. Kepline is also in the poll position in the speaker queue. So let's take uh, Mr. Kepline next. Thank you, Mr. Moderator, Mark Kepline, Precinct 9. Um, there's no shame in failure, unlike pouring good money after bad. 20% of businesses fail within one year, half within five years. A Lime exited from the Boston market should have been a red flag to people as their shift to motorized bikes and scooters only. So this, this is not going to be a, a sustained um, adventure. It's gonna cost more money. Initially, we were told just $20,000 um, two years ago, and we would have six stations forever thanks to 180,000 from the state. Now it's back to the well for $100,000 for two more years. Um, I think it's best to cut our losses, sell the stations, and maybe reinvest later with e-bikes, which is what the market is heading towards. In fact, Lime only offers e-bikes and scooters. Uh, New York City is on their second generation of e-bikes, and uh, we should get some money for these obsolete stations while we can. Uh, also, I have a problem with the e these bikes because there's no accommodation for disabled people. Here's public money being spent on something specifically for able-bodied people, and there's no no trikes, no no electrified bikes or anything to support the disabled. Um, So um, I sent out an email to, to members of the town meeting, and I hope they had a chance to look at it. And I feel there's many other ways that $100,000 could better serve residents, like additional street lighting at pedestrian crosswalks, on-demand pedestrian crossing lights. These would all improve safety. Um, and the other issue is it, it, there's some funny stuff with the with the federal government. So a lot of the funding is under the CMAC program, which is for congestion mitigation and air quality improvement. Uh, that money is for uh, transportation that replaces um, motorized uh, elect, uh, uh, fuel um, transport. And in fact, a lot of these bikes are getting used for recreational use which is not covered under uh, CO2 reduction funding. 
and also you know even the recent uh, bike path expansions again they're recreational they don't serve much residences like the greenway and the proposed mystic valley um, uh, path you know the, the original minuteman bikeway is fantastic it serves residents it serves schools it serves going to businesses but we're getting farther and farther afield from that so um I'm going to suggest we're also getting a bit far afield from the scope as well. So, (laughs) so I I, I hope we can just cut our losses. And, um, you know, the people all over want e-bikes. They want motorized transportation. And these bikes are are not going to get any more popular going forward. They're going to get less popular. Uh, People in Arlington have enough money to buy their own bikes. Uh, in fact, they, the yearly annual fee for these bikes are $120 $20 a year. You can buy a, a brand new bike at Walmart for that or get any number of used bikes or even free bikes and a, and a bike lock and satisfy the need for two-wheeled transportation. So uh, thank you for your concern and interest. Um, I hope people vote no on this. Great. Thank you. Uh, Let's take uh, Mr. McNeil next, and uh, we are getting close to 11 o'clock, so this may be the last speaker of the night. Mr. McNeil, name and precinct, please. Hi, uh, Adam McNeil, Precinct 6. So I'm a member of the Arlington Bicycle Advisory Committee, uh, which was asked to vote on this. Um, and I was actually uh, possibly surprisingly a, a fairly bit hesitant at this at first. Um, even though it has some undeniable societal benefits. And we actually had a quite a long discussion and I eventually changed my mind for a few reasons that I think are uh, important now that it's been pulled off the consent agenda. Um, first, uh, something that helped me wrap my head around this a little bit is that I think it's rather misleading to consider this as a subsidy. As Blue Brikes, first off, it provides a direct service to the town and it doesn't make a profit off of Arlington, which is the reason we're doing this in the first place. As it currently stands, it's money back into the pocket of working, of the production, of the maintenance of these. It's uh, there's no profit margin on this one hundred thousand dollars that we'd be putting in over the next two years. In, in I kind of or not, I kind of I do think of this now as payment for services rendered to the town, uh, very similar to how the town pays a contract for external printer maintenance. Then, of course, we have the question: Well, now we've established as a service. Uh, Is it actually useful? Is it actually something we're using? Is it increasing in use? Uh, Is this something for which we should be paying a contract? Uh, And the answer to that is yes, uh, it's being used. Last year, we averaged about 1.3 rides per bike per day, uh, which is a slight, actually a decent increase over the year before, which was the first year. And so that's a good trend. And there's also a fairly substantial portion of those rides that either started or ended in a neighboring town, especially Cambridge. Um, So that's either indicating probably either commuting or day trips that happen to bring people into Arlington Center. And you can see that if you're standing out there and looking on the bike path or around, you can see how the bikes move around. Um, So for reference, two trips per day is when Blue Bike breaks even. So we're approaching that, although we are obviously a, a bit away still. And uh, as um, uh, Ms. LaCourt mentioned, when the two years are up, we re-evaluate based on, hey, have we actually reached those two uh, trips per day? And if the trends go, we'll be pretty close to that. And that's, uh, then we don't have to subsidize more or a lot less, or as I would say, pay more, not necessarily subsidize. And then, yeah, so that's the two main points that changed my mind. I'd also like to bring up that there's a fundamental difference between the quite well-established blue bikes that have done successfully for a decade plus in some of our neighboring uh, municipalities and Lime, which obviously had a shifting business model and was not as, it was, it was also fundamentally different being dockless for stock. There's different costs involved with that. So I do want to say I urge people to support this. Uh, it has some um, in, in good improvement, uh, Good societal benefits in reducing traffic and emissions, and uh, you know, opening up exercise and things like that. But also, it's not a um, waste of money on the town's part in that regard. It's a service that is being provided, and a service that's useful to the residents. Thank you. Great, thank you, Mr. McNeil. 
Uh, we do have a point of order from Ms. Weber. Let's take that before we close things up for the night. Ma'am in precinct, please, and your point of order. I don't know how you get to terminate debate other than point of order. That's what I wanted to do is to, um, motion to adjourn actually is what I wanted to do. But I don't know where you do that, so I had to do point uh, of okay. order. Okay, so uh, before we entertain that motion to adjourn, uh, do we have any notices of reconsideration for any articles that we voted on tonight that folk, if, if you voted on the prevailing side but of an article, uh, but you would like to give notice of reconsideration if there might be new information um, um, that we should take up in the future to, to reconsider that article, uh, any notices? Uh, Mr. Mr. Foskett? Yes. Mr. Moderator, Charles Foskett, Precinct 10, Chair of the Finance Committee. Having uh, voted on the prevailing side on Articles 50, 51, 53, 54 and 57, I would like to serve notice of reconsideration of those articles. Okay, noted. Uh, I'm sure uh, 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 Ms. Brazil can uh, take note of those. Um, and any other notices of reconsideration? Let's enable raise hands in Zoom uh, for any notices of reconsideration on any of the articles uh, that we voted on tonight. And seeing none, let's get back to Ms. Weber's uh, motion to adjourn. Second. Uh, we have a second from second. Mr. Foskett. Uh, any raised, please raise your hand in Zoom if you object to adjourning. It is 11.01 PM. Um, and seeing none, uh, it's unanimous. And so we are now adjourned. We will reconvene on Wednesday, May 18th at 8 PM. Thanks everyone. Mm -hmm.